We be casting off now. Hello and welcome to the From the Spirit World podcast, a legendary Avatar The Last Airbender and the Legend of Korra podcast for OverlyAnimated.com. We are here podcasting episode by episode on the new Netflix live action series. Uh, whether the show is great, terrible, or anything in between, it's going to be fun to talk about it. With the old From the Spirit World crew, new podcasts generally will be out every Friday, Monday, and Wednesday for the next few weeks while we are going through the eight-episode first season that just dropped. I am your host, Dylan, and today I'm joined by Mel. Hello. Sam. Hello. Delaney. Hey, y'all. And Allie. Hi. Uh, Yes, we're here talking episode two of the Netflix Avatar show, Warriors. Uh, We previously podcasted on the premiere of the new Netflix live action Avatar The Last Airbender series. Uh, You can not miss any of our podcasts by subscribing to one of our many feeds where I'm posting this. You can search from the spare world or overly animated anywhere. Uh, You listen to podcasts to to get the feed and subscribe to these podcasts. There's a dedicated feed just for this podcast series. There's the from the spare world feed, which also has the all the old from the spare world podcasts. And I'm now adding on top of that. So very exciting. Subscribe to any of those or on the main overly animated feed to get all these podcasts. We are only watching up to the episode that we, well, some of us, are, that we're covering here. Um, spoilers only up to episode two, Warriors. Um, and please, no spoilers past this episode in the comments. There are some changes. Um, that being said, we'll be in full spoiler territory for the original Avatar and also Korra throughout this podcast series. And you can send us your questions and comments to read on the upcoming podcast to podcast at overlyanimated.com and put in the title the email what episode there are spoilers up to. Um, and that'll be great. We have some feedback to read at the end of this one. But first, we're going to get into everything from Warriors. Um, Warrior Mel, Cats. What is that? Warrior Cats. No. Huh? <laughs> no cats here. Uh, but we'll talk about Momo, I guess. Anyway, Mel, uh, what did you think of this uh, second episode? <clears throat> um, I thought it was improvement from the first one. Um, just because it seemed to be more aware pacing wise of what it wanted to do. Um, I still have a lot of the same issues with the characterization dialogue and all that stuff, but, um, I did enjoy the sort of like, I guess we'll call it world building or backstory or what have you, um, that I previously did not know. Perhaps some people might've already known it. All right. From a book, it's like one. Um, it's like one line, but, but um, yeah. I mean, it's it, it. It was it was an improvement on the last episode. Nice, uh, Delaney. What did you think of this episode? I really enjoyed this episode. I loved it a lot. I thought it was really funny, and I had a lot of fun with it. Like I, I had to keep pausing and, and like like kicking my feet because Suki and Sokka were so cute. <laughs> kicking your feet, looking because they're Suki. so cute. Literally, totally so... my hair. Kicking Did my you feet. find them? Was that part of the part you found funny, or were it other parts? There were other parts, but also no. I also thought that part, like I also thought all of that was funny, and it was super cute. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it a lot. And also, yay, Momo. The Momo gags are great. I want them to keep doing them. I want it to be super serious, and then Momo is just harassing Sokka. Momo's the only comedic element. Um, yeah. I mean, Suki being like awkward and being like, I'm going to flirt with this boy by beating him up was A+. plus. Need a woman like that. Also, That's... I'm gay for Suki. Okay. And your wife, but... <laughs> <laughs> Presumably. Presumably. Um, I mean, it's I not... Am, Tanya, so Tanya didn't watch it with me because she had to go to work. I am going to make her watch it tomorrow. So you cheated gonna... on her. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay. We're gonna watch uh, episodes two and three. So, okay, nice. I was gonna force her to watch it because she was like, "Where's Momo?" Yes, so. we found out. We discussed, and that was immediately answered. So that was wonderful. <laughs> um, Allie, what did you think of Warriors? Um, I, I had a good time. I think pretty similarly to what Delaney and Mel, Mel were saying about um, the the pacing is better here. I also found myself laughing at like Sokka's being silly. I I also still have issues with like some of the dialogue and character interactions that seem not just like because they're different from the original, but some of them are more muted to like 
compared to like the original in the sense that like a lot of the defining characteristics are not as prevalent prevalent i don't i never i mess that word up all the time um this was where uh though ian saka's actor really started to grow on me because even with like i'm sure we'll get into this like the removal of his being like really sexist like girls can't fight blah 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 i don't think it was necessary here um that said i don't know if it made the suki saka interaction suffer for from it i it wasn't terrible but it was slightly less believable i mean it kind of it kind of makes sense because like supposedly this is like the only man she's ever seen and like sure why not fall for him i guess um (laughs) i think like their their interactions were good though we'll get into it um it was a good time definitely better than the pilot but pilots are hard to work with she still beat him up which is really all i wanted yes oh also i will say i think i'm the only single one on this podcast so suki is mine thank you all right that's fine fair i guess (laughs) <laughs> okay. Uh, Sam, uh, you were not with us on the first uh, podcast, so you can get into your thoughts on episode one, in addition to your thoughts on Warriors. Um. Well, let's get into Warriors. I thought that this episode was perfectly functional. Um, <laughs> I yeah, think. I mean, it gets us to where we need to be. We learn more about Avatar, Mumbo Jumbo. It's fine. I didn't really care much for any of the Sokka, Suki, any of what Aang and Katar were up to, quite frankly. <gasps> um, yeah, sorry, y'all. <laughs> but, like, I'm I'm really, I don't know, I find myself more uh, captured by what's happening with Zuko and Zhao and yeah. Iroh. I actually thought that part was the strongest part of this episode, truthfully. Yeah. Nice. Oh, he was being a big baby. He loved it. I was like, yes, keep being a baby, Zuko. It yeah, does so, still has Zuko like down perfectly for me. Yeah, he is amazing. He's you know. so tiny. It's great. You all yeah. should watch uh, Pen 1 5. Yeah, that one's awesome. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, 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 he's very funny in it. Sam, awesome. bri- briefly, were you thumbs up or thumbs down on the first episode for uh, reference? Th- thumbs down. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was not a big fan of it, no. So a bigger fair. fan of this episode, relatively. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Forgot. I'm sorry, Kiyoshi. That's it. Kiyoshi. Yeah. I mean, big Kiyoshi episode. She is so tall. It's scary. Mm, I'm scared she, of her. Giant woman. Yeah. Um. I I guess like this a little more than the first episode, but not by a lot. Um. I think it's. I think it was fine. I appreciate that everyone's being positive here. Before we There's started, the, like, before so we started the series, I was worried because of all the it's fandom skepticism. Killer. I was like, "Let's make sure to be positive." And now I'm maybe the lowest so far on the first two episodes. <laughs> this is surprising to me. This is this is this is the plan. This is the long con. Uh, <laughs> check right. out. Long con. I'm like, what's going on? I, I mean, I, I the first time I watched it, this episode is pretty boring. I guess. Um, like the like the bad view is like it's like a, just, it's just a worse version of the Avatar Warriors of kyoshi episode like i think we're avatar wars kyoshi nine out of ten like great episode Mm -hmm. this is like a six out of ten like it's fine yeah i do agree with you that like overall like what they're doing is they're like we're gonna take these really great episodes of avatar and then boil them down into one episode and take out the parts that make sense (laughs) we're gonna take this masterpiece and just make it okay also avatar day is so much fun so, Avatar day. so th- th- they changed some things here. And if you missed the first podcast, I am, as of now, this is going to be a journey and I've not seen past this episode. I liked that they changed stuff in the first episode, hit and miss. I loved the Southern Air Temple slice of life parts of the first episode. Uh, they did change some stuff here. They incorporated elements from Avatar Day in season two, weirdly, is how I see it. Did um, they? I was not paying attention to that. Well, so in... Kyo- Wars of you guys can tell me what you think. It's been a while since I've seen Avatar, but Wars of Kyoshi, Kyoshi doesn't actually appear. I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then right. Avatar Day is when we see her, and she in- inhibits Aang. So yes, I yes, feel yes, like yes, that yes. they are. And Avatar, I forgot about this. I actually, it's like, oh, I won't watch Avatar, but but I end up reading the wikia to try to remember what happened. Uh, <laughs> I, in Avatar Day, they go back to Kyoshi, so I think that they're just mm-hmm. taking those parts and putting it in here. Um, and also I saw on the first bucket, I was like, this is an adaptation of the first three episodes, but then they're still in the Southern Air Temple this episode, which you don't really get the impression they will be at the end of the first episode, but that's fine. And the Zhao parts are, I believe, an adaptation of the Southern Air Temple in this episode. So half of the third episode is, uh, in this episode and half was in the first episode. 
And I think that the main issue is that the Southern Air Temple adaptation, this is not just, this applies to both episodes one and two of the live action show. I think the Southern Air Temple adaptation is like much worse than that episode. Mm. Um, I think the words Kyoji stuff is fine. It's just like we take out the Agni Kai between. That's what I was curious about. Yeah. What's the point? I'm like, when are we going to take our shirts off and fight? Like, what are well, we it, It's interesting that they've got Zhao as this sort of uh, bureaucrat as opposed to like. You know, the, like, beefy, yeah. like, t- tough guy that he was. It's a much the, different uh, portrayal, in, at yeah. least to start with here, which we'll t- I, I'm very interested to talk about. As number one Zhao fan in the world, I am very interested <laughs> to talk about this. Um, oh, and I, I want to say, I thought Suki was such a Suki in this episode. Just what wanna, the hell does that even mean? Out there. I'm just no, putting it out What do you even mean? She was just such a Suki. We're going to talk about <laughs> what that means. Uh, okay, but, like, come on now. Dylan's just being a troll. Just it's fine. Mm. <laughs> My favorite part, unsurprisingly, in this episode was the Katang. I was the water fight. They're it. so cute. Oh, that one. Yeah. Even though it was only one minute of. Kat oh my god, you got me saying it now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, wow, guys, oh, I'm gonna need you to gonna protect this all. Okay, uh, we'll end. We'll talk about. Uh, they they have the one training scene, and it's not. It's not like it's amazing. And also, honestly, I think that the. the M. Night movie has like one training scene with Ang and Katara, and it was the best part of that movie. It's a very easy thing to do. Uh, so I'm glad we put it in here. Let's do more of that. I would hope we're going to have more. Okay, I will say I have a little bit of a grape. I like grape that <laughs> Gray and Grand gave her, shut up, gave her the scroll, but I'm also like, I love that episode. So I'm yeah, like, I believe I, she hid that. She was like, yeah. What, the waterbending scroll? The waterbending yeah. She's going to hide this from you. As predicted, not doing that episode. I, so again, that's so, oh yeah. So I'm going to say, I think that there are good decisions in here at bringing Avatar mm-hmm. Day stuff into this episode. Put Just put, having Katara have the scroll from the start. Uh, Zhao, uh, putting Zhao into the Warriors of Kyoshi. That, I think if you're not gonna do, uh, this net previous episode and like that, that's a great decision. So the, the story, the decisions are all good in terms of what they're changing. It's just like they're also the removing basically all the humor and, uh, the fun parts and, uh, like the, a lot of the romance in terms of Aang and Katara, but they can at least we kept the Sakasaki. They're like, let's tell the story of Avatar in like the most concise way possible. And I'm like, why? Well, I mean, they gotta shove it. Interactions as a whole seems so muted. I do. uh, I I think that everything seems very muted to me thus far, Um, and that is kind of the main criticism. But from the way some some of you people are talking about the later episodes, I'm hopeful that it will get better. Uh, But I gotta say, as of now, uh, definitely, definitely seems muted. Definitely seems like all the fears that people were talking about, like we're gonna take out all the fun, like fun parts, like and all the parts that made it Avatar, kind of checking out so far. Got to <laughs> gotta say, kind of what it seems like. T- changing yeah. Kyoshi's mom, Kyoshi uh, changing the village chief into uh, Suki's, Suki's mom, mom is, I think, another good decision. The very oh, good decision. Yeah, there are like eight, she's like, also hot, like respective, right? like individual decisions that I don't hate. It's just the sum of its parts is not. Um, it's really like yeah. one good decision for every one good decision. There are two bad decisions to counteract it. Yeah, not, I, not all the time, but majority. Oh, and I'll say the last ten minutes. I think the episode was generally good, and I agree with Mel on the pacing. Like it builds up in the last ten minutes. I think are good. So, I guess it's a better episode of television. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> but I, I need more from the show, please. Uh, we're only on podcast two. <laughs> also, uh, I love it when he rides the Unagi, and I'm like, God, you're just taking out all well, my. Well, we knew that wasn't gonna happen. I yeah, know. I think it's fine that he doesn't do that here because it's a waste of time. So I would, let's oh, we're on no, this topic. Let's talk about the tone and the, the this is a continued topic from episode one. Sam, what's re- your view on this in terms of like, are they taking out the fun stuff? Are they taking about stuff that made it Avatar? Are you hating all that or are you kind of accepting what the show's doing? I mean, they're definitely taking out parts from the original show. It's just it's the nature of this being a live action adaptation. That's eight, 40 to 50 minute episodes mm-hmm. and trying to like turn something that was. 20 22 minute episodes give or take into something that small like you know you're gonna not have a lot of the same elements and they want to get the plot going they want to get from point a to point b and unfortunately it seems like they are just getting rid of a lot of the humor and a lot of the quote-unquote filler and the character development too like it just seems like this is a lot of like plot and not a lot of character Mm -hmm. um yeah so I don't know. I would have liked the scene 
maybe looking at other action adventure shows from the past, like how TV has treated these sort of things where, okay, there's this big bad, big boss, whatever. And they're still like a gang of like teenagers and they're having fun. Uh, Something like Buffy or something like, I don't know, something like that where, you know, it plays with the humor, but it also has the serious and the melodrama and just these like world changing things happening. I would have liked to seen that more from all of this, but that's, it kind of just is what it is. And it is kind of what, the tone of TV seems to be these days. There isn't a lot of humor. I just think this show just isn't a good choice for this kind of adaptation. Mm -hmm. Like, if you know, people keep bringing up, you know, and the creators said, you know, they're kind of, you know, that Game of Thrones kind of audience. We're talking about it like a lighthearted travel log kind of show. You know, maybe book three. Book three, you could go full Game of Thrones if you wanted to. But books one and two, like, Maybe, you know, like the middle to end of book two, more Game of thrones but especially book one, this is not, that. that's just not what this is. And that, I think that's ultimately why we're losing so much is because that's part of the journey. It's part of the charm is they're in a new place every day. We're flying around, we're camping. And part of the like being in a new place every day, to Sam's point about like the TV these days having like a formula, it seems. It also seems like these days, a lot of television and this included, it holds your hand through a lot and that like... Sam, I think you you did say it was it's a lot of telling and not showing, and it's like saying like here is like the motivation, and here is why you should care about this character, and if you like we're gonna hold your hand because you can't figure out on your own, and you're stupid for not being able to figure like, out on your I own. Mean, like if we had left, I wouldn't have gotten the scroll. Like that it was the feels dumbest. really yeah. like they not just this show, but a lot of television these days, especially adaptations, punch down to the audience because they're like you need you're not gonna understand this. Let me let me show it well, to you because you're a little dumb dumb. Media literacy is like zero. Dead. Yeah. Well, this doesn't really help. That's the problem. No, exactly. So I think uh, we'll c- come back to that. I think Sam brings up a good point in terms of the filler episodes. That's been something I've meaning, been meaning to talk about. Um, definitely. I mean, look, I've only seen two, so I can't really say yet. But it does not seem like we're going to have filler episodes within these eight. Uh, like, I don't think I think they'll probably all eight of these will probably have a plot purpose, um, I would assume. Mm. But maybe their strategy is to have the, you know, and of course the the term filler, that's a whole debate and avatar fandom. And really it's like character focus instead of plot focus. Mm -hmm. So will there be, I think their strategy is to have character focused like moments or plot lines within the larger plot episode, uh, considering the extended runtime. Um, now to what extent did we get that in this episode? I think it felt pretty minimal to me. Like that one, like what, like when are they having fun? Like Katara and Aang have like, 30 seconds of fun in this episode i feel like i genuinely really like that scene i think it was one of the strongest not just because of shipping purposes but because it like shows how they try to bring out the levity in each other yeah in this time of like darkness and then at the end when uh and kyoshi turns back into ang um katara's like uh nice nice job avatar yeah that was cute uh nice and they smile at each other i love i love that and you know why it's some of the only times people are smiling in the show (laughs) (laughs) that's true uh, but I do think like that's what the Tim for me has been the strongest uh, job the actors and the show have done of capturing the Katang dynamic, you know. Um, but that's, uh, that's really funny you say that because I just do not feel it at all. <laughs> I don't th- I don't feel it like romantically, but like yeah, no, it's to yeah. be friends and like they barely interact at all. Yeah, like I just see from this, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm we're older and like I'm not into that sort of thing anymore. <laughs> but um. <laughs> It, it just it feels like oh yeah these are just two kids who are hanging out being buddies like yeah cool yeah well, i like well, it. If, that's what they are right now you know so i'm not even yeah. saying it's necessarily like romantically charged or anything it's more of just the two characters but sam do you think that's because of the decision to remove ang's crush on katara do you think that's impacting how you're viewing them no i mean okay so full disclosure i did rewatch the entire uh series before this all came out so i'm a little bit more refreshed Yes. Than uh, oh, some other people, I guess. Did, were you in, in your rewatch? Were you feeling the Katang? I'll say for you as much no. as or when when we're growing no. up. <laughs> no, no way. Um, well, Dang. no. Here, here's here's the thing. It's a lot of just Katara being his mommy. Really, it's <laughs> she's like you know always coddling, sort of always sort of 
being the support system for Aang. And of course he would have a crush on her. Why wouldn't it? And she doesn't really seem to have any strong feelings one mm. way or the other. All throughout it, it's just like you're seeing how Aang feels about Katara because Katara treats Aang, you know, so like he's special, like he's important, like, which, you know, it, that's cool, whatever. But I just, that isn't... <laughs> It's very basic to me, and that's just what it is for a show of its time, and it's fine. But it isn't my cup of tea anymore. So, and of I course, think I think I, you you could you could like argue that uh, the Katara Ang stuff doesn't really turn into actual like romance stuff until like the last season, or oh, something. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. not at all. And it's just kind of um, kid crushes and stuff before them. But uh, to your point of Katara being the mom, I feel like they're so far taking a lot of that out of the show. It's non-existent. Oh, yeah, it's it's definitely I think that's all been kind of shifted a little bit more towards Sokka, really. Like he's yeah, like the big Mama village Sada. protector. Yeah. Do, do you like that decision to take that part of Katara out? No, not really. I have a thought about that. <laughs> um, yes. Because weirdly, I, we were talking about this. Um, yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. Um uh, my girlfriend who did not watch it, um, but has been getting my rants about it. Um, I re- sure. We were talking about like the the sort of um, change in some of the dynamics, and she pointed out that like one thing that happens in the original show is like that's part of um, Katara's sort of like arc in and of itself is the fact that she was forced to be the mother figure to mm-hmm. like the entire village essentially, and and forced to like grow up in a in a you know, much more um, abridged timeline. And I feel like that definitely gets lost when you don't have that dynamic um, there. Or, like, you know, there's been no indication from, like, Sokka's character, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, when her mom died, you know, like, always kind of thought of Katara as as the caretaker and stuff. Like, none of that seems to be coming across, and I feel like that is an important part of, like, Mm -hmm. what she goes through. Um, So, you know. I guess I guess you could argue in this episode she is overseeing Aang. She does she does have the crucial Qatar role of ta- watching him while he's in the Avatar state in this episode. Um, so I, <sighs> I but then she Katara runs role. away yeah, while he's like, in the Avatar you. state. Okay, bye. Let yeah, go. well, you know. yeah, she has really no, not not a ton of emotional reaction to it. Yeah, that, at, least, the, at least at least the crucial part more. of it. Yeah, um, it is interesting the discussion on Qatar, and I've and I've heard it all. Evolve as the show goes on so we can continue to discuss that. But yeah, the, it's a good point without the, the Katara mom stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I would see like this is the type of thing in general. Like I'm open to them changing things. Um, mm. I think this this it's not, you know, as as we're discussing the Katara Nang, uh evolving romance out of their dynamic in the original show is not necessarily the healthiest place to start a a uh, <laughs> romance considering uh, she's a mom figure to him for, and then also he's an all-powerful godlike figure that she looks up to it's not like the most uh typical healthy, healthy foundations of romance so if they want to like shift that to try to tell a different version i'm, I'm interested um yeah. yeah like that's not a bad thing yeah yeah it's just like but right now it's like what are you doing it's, it's like weird what, what, not what, having that be part of her character at all not specifically towards what? ang just like take, so we take the yeah we take that part out of Katara. okay what are we doing instead that's that's, that's my she's big like, question she's... with all of these changes I'm, I'm i'm even open to them removing all the jokes i'm i really am because i i would think that i will like the show better the more it changes because it's the less i'm just going to be comparing it to this is a worse version of this episode mm-hmm. which seems inevitable but uh, I, I just don't think that they are really replacing things, as I said last episode, with uh, anything for any good reason. Um, and I got that sense again from this episode. I'm just not sure what is the purpose of all these changes, except as was discussed by Sam and others, to conform it to a typical television show of this time. I would say, for th- from my perspective through two episodes, all of these changes seem to be in service of making it a typical streaming slash cable serialized uh, show. Like, I, th- I think basically, like, that's why we're making it a more serious tone. That's why we are 
maybe removing a lot of Sokka's blatant sexism to make it. That's why we are removing Aang's decision to uh, Aang leaving specifically in the flashback instead of uh, he's like, I'll go take a walk. It's to that make it more so pal- to make it more palatable. Like, again, I'm like, OK, we're ta- we're changing it. But why is it just so that Aang is not uh, people don't think Aang is unlikable? Is it so people don't think Sokka is unlikable? I, I think that's the only guess I have so far. Yeah. yeah, like your characters need to have flaws mm-hmm. and they need to have things that they have to overcome. Otherwise, like, what's the point? It, it's just these, this very washed uh, vanilla version of these characters and things that are not as strong. I think this basically applies to every single character uh, so far. Um, it's But I, again, I'm just like, I want to know why they're doing this. But so far, it just seems to me to make this like slightly honestly despite the fact that avatar was a kid's show to make this more brainless than avatar was in some in some respects i don't know i mean that's kind of harsh but like uh, we'll see through and we haven't seen this full picture yet um but uh, and not necessarily that making characters more likable is necessarily brainless but it's less less critical thinking (laughs) required it feels like to me at this point i don't know yeah i'm very black and white just because like well i think that happened i mean that happens a lot when we're talking about media literacies like zero it's like just because you like you know i like zuko whoa you like zuko he's trying to hunt down the avatar what's wrong with you like making them this way doesn't like mean you're supporting it Zuko, you could, I could see now that you say that Zuko as an interpretation of when they're not doing this, because Zuko comes across, to me, not super likable through two episodes in a good way. Like, yeah, he's, he's hyper exactly focused on as he looking... was in book one for me, the whiny little brat. And we don't even, we don't, we don't get the like <laughs> slice of life scenes with Zuko. I, I don't remember if there are, to what extent there are through four episodes, but let the man, old man have some tea. All we get is him just like yelling about, uh, to Iroh and about finding and, you know, and Iroh's trying to lecture him. So we really haven't gotten anything, anything to deviate from this kind of singular mindedness of Zuko, which is very accurate to the show. So maybe, maybe they are doing the best job with Zuko so far. Yeah, for sure. Um, what, do we want to talk about, uh, what we can continue this discussion throughout. Um, do you want to talk about Sokka and Suki here? We, I, don't even I didn't, I didn't, I'm going to, I'm going to go out and say, I didn't hate it. I didn't okay. hate it, but I didn't willing like to, it. Willing to, to spar about that. That was necessary. Okay. <laughs> that was spar Why like they fighting were. with you. <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't know. I expect every time I say something, I, I'm waiting for Abby to, Alec, oh my god, oh, I did it again! Yes. Oh, oh, oh. No, Abby's really the crazy. fifth co-host here. This is okay. nuts. I don't know if we can be friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of um, things happening. Allie. I'm not, um, I'm not gonna fight anyway, you point on is, that. I'm gonna fight you for this is, I, yeah, this my is name. the fight I was looking for. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't hate it. I mean, you know, and to your point, like, you know, as we watch things well, as you sort of watch more of the show, <laughs> talking from the future, you know, like it will, some things become clear of like, okay, you're taking this away, but you're replacing it with this. Like, mm-hmm. I get it. Some yeah. things, you know, that's definitely not happening and it's still not clear to me. Um, but I think, you know, I, I, what I liked about this is I, you know, I was actually interested in how we kind of flipped this to be Suki's arc more than Sako's because, you know, now that I think about it, I feel like in, the original episode it's like okay like you know Sokka comes to a, <clears throat> a village of warrior women um and he has to you know get his sexism cured essentially and like yeah. you know it just feels like oh yeah like Suki was basically doing like like existed to do emotional labor for Sokka and help him through through his arc so I liked here that it's like she's the one who's kind of going through something and experiencing more the agency. Yeah, so, you know, it felt like it actually, you know, as somebody who's never really been a big fan of Suki, I actually, like, it may be. Ooh. This version, I'm I'm a little bit more interested in. That's how I Dylan, feel. what do you mean, ooh? You're the one who was, like, she's I think all of us are on the record as not being big fans of Suki, actually. So it's, well, uh, on the record, yeah, but I'd That's like the to most interesting that discussion personally. when we get there. Well, we're going to get, uh, let's act. I guess let's actually talk about the show's version first, um, but... Uh, that's, that's interesting, Mel, in terms of Suki, more Suki, uh, perspective or, or, or similar version, because I feel like notably in terms of the d- sexism discussion in the show, by removing Sako's overt sexism from this episode, uh, I, well, I was gonna, I'll, let me first say, I feel like notably Sako is 
either not sexist or I would argue they actually maybe do a good job of showing subtle sexism from Sokka in this episode because he's like, oh, I'm equal to you. I'm also a protector. And then he's, he thinks he can uh, cut the melons the same as her. And then he thinks that he can he can spar with her like he does, it takes him a little bit to get through to his head that she's like a lot more powerful than him yeah. at this point. So yeah. I thought that was handled well. So the the talk of like no sexism from Sokka, I would say it's present in this episode. Yeah, it's just mm-hmm. not like woman's places in the kitchen, Sokka. But do you think that's even like a gender thing, or it's like almost like a class and resources thing? Could be. Like, could be. Do you think it was him feeling like he's like from some like you know like backwater village at the bottom of the world type? Type could just it could just be an egotistical thing to some yeah. extent, I, you know. I mean, no matter what, I don't. Really, I mean, it's just. I think like no matter what, it's it, it's more interesting to me that it's like. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. it opens things up a little bit more than making it about this one singular... Right, so so you're saying that by removing that, it allows us to see more of Suki and more of Suki's yeah. perspective on things. Also, yeah. it seems more like, you know, so it, it's not turning from Sokka being like, I'm better, blah, 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 than having to get it beat out of him to, hey, I'm trying to impress this girl. And Katara and Aang are, like, snickering at him yeah. the whole time because he is failing miserably at impressing her. Which is nice. I like. The, I the will reactions. say, I still wish he wore the Kiyoshi Warriors yes, outfit. Yes, we were. Robbed. Yeah, that is a bummer that they took. We were robbed. Off. So we take Sokka out of the the face pin and the entire outfit. Um, um, again, I'm like, so what is the purpose of this this decision? Uh, is it to make Sokka to not emasculate Sokka for the audience? Like, like I, I, I go to uncharitable uh, versions of why why they might be doing this right away, just because I can't think of why this improves the storytelling. Yeah, I don't think your uncharitable assumptions are far off. I, I yeah. Like it's a sort of Occam's razor thing. Uh, you, you could know? argue that, I mean, this is like, Sokka donning the face paint and the outfit in this episode, in the fourth episode of the first season of the show, is the most gender positive thing that happens in all of Avatar. Mm -hmm. um maybe i'm forgetting something um not like it's Mm. but you know like he's wearing woman warrior clothes and woman's face paint and uh it's avatar is a show severely lacking in queer anything and this is like this one small moment that isn't actually even queer it's just like non-gender non-conforming and this is what you choose to take away so that did piss me off, and when I I will it the say first time. I don't know if they would have done a good job. It it did it did prevent them from messing it up. <laughs> that yeah, is true. That's what I do think that I'm not sure, like tonally, and like with because like part of it is you know like lol at Sokka, and then it's also you know very serious because Sokka learns how to fight and you know does all of it. I don't know if this show could have done that. I think they could. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, now that I hear it that way, it's like I'm just imagining them doing it wrong. Yes, in, like, I don't sort know of if they today's could have done it internet right, climate but... and like how how but they just, they kind of did that like with the training scene that they had. It was a little awkward, but it was like kind of a half version of it. I yes. don't know, Sam. What do you what do you what's your take on the Sakasuki here? Um, just generally. Generally, or anything we've been specifically talking uh, about. Here. I mean, okay, so Suki herself, I I have to agree. I do think it's a positive thing in, like, kind of mitigating Sokka's sexism that we get more Suki characterization. I think that's a good thing. But I, I just, I don't agree with, you know, oh, Sokka's, like, the first boy man child whomever who comes along and oh suki's got the eyes for him because that's, he's cute that's was really unbelievable for me yeah for i, I don't know it just it, it, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way like she's a goddess and that's <laughs> just the he's easy i think he's i, I mean, I, he has his shirt off i think he's supposed to be a good well, with his shirt I off see. is much better but oh like. god i didn't realize it was only his shirt off I mean, at first. <laughs> oh yeah, I was like, naked. I oh my god. Man. Yeah, I thought he was naked. That first. was a strange oh. road to go. Like she's just straight up staring at him. With like, to off. me, some of this stuff is believable, though. Like you know, if you're a straight girl who yeah. has grown up around just women, yeah, your entire life, and you you're see a teenage a boy of you know adequate attractiveness. <laughs> Like, you know, I can see I can yeah, see that yeah. being a throw like, like they do see it, it's just on how I on how isolated Kyoshi Island is. It makes sense, but the timeline 
to like how how little they interacted and how like sporadic the interactions were leading up to that kiss at the end. It okay, was well, yeah. more so unbelievable. This was like, let me put it this way, Allie. Say you were, you know, alone <laughs> on Kyoshi Island, whatever. Right. But it, instead of instead of um, a bunch of Kyoshi warriors, a bunch of dudes, and then Suki you, showed up. Suki shows up. <laughs> okay, you know I do like boys as well, right? I know, but like you just see it, like the, just putting it in like a different like you know perspective here. I mean, like, I, I understand what I get it, but like I, don't know. I, I thought I, it, I think it. Go ahead. It's sorry, Dylan. It's it's completely believable. Like I I I agree with that. It's just I I just I don't know. It goes a little bit. It's not hard tot- handed, heavy handed. Yeah, and and it it doesn't, it doesn't really match up a lot with how she was in the original show, which that's kind of part of what I liked personally. Is that you know she wasn't all all googly eyes over Sokka. She was very you know I'm warrior, hooray, and I don't know. I feel like. Also, in getting rid of Sokka's like sexism, it kind of I don't I don't know. The show is positioning him as like the the this like soft boy, lover boy, like this heartthrob kind of in my eyes at least. And I don't I don't know how I feel I mean, about he that. He does have the, the most uh, the most romantic entanglements. I think of I thought you were going to say Riz. I, I think he is the lover what boy the, so what, far. What the um, hell is that? I you really did you just ask what Riz was? was? Yeah, That's right. we don't need to. We're too old for that. It's 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 short for charisma. <laughs> yeah, just it's just charisma. Yeah, you need to learn how the kids these days talk. I, I don't talk to them. Yeah, so we're gonna look. We're gonna anything. lock in and continue this discussion on Sakuzuki. <laughs> oh. um, no, I want to dilly dally. <laughs> so I don't think that's modern lingo, but uh, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, I uh, in, in, about Suki, I le- so I think broadening her spect- per perspective, good. I felt like, and maybe this is what we were talking about just now. Uh, I, what I didn't like was that all of her arc seemingly just boils down to. Um, uh, like, oh, you showed me the world, Saka. You brought the yeah. world to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw when I got. Uh, I can, yeah. <laughs> so that's <laughs> that's really just it. Like, if we brought in Suki's perspective to show more of her interactions with her warrior teammates, yeah. I think that right. might be cool. We saw one scene right. of them training together, and it was kind of nothing. She's just all of her scenes are with Saka. She has like one scene talking to her mom, and again, it's just it's just this one thing. It's like um you brought you you showed me that there's stuff outside this island like i get it's realistic given the situation i just thought it was very like reductive to this yeah. person to reduce mm-hmm. her to yeah, just definitely. this one aspect i did low-key think she was going to join the team though i was like okay uh, yeah i was like oh we, we i would have been that's the another I, crime of this show is that there's not enough suki i think uh, avatar or this show both. I don't know. When well, did you so, so, become such a fan of Suki? Okay, we'll come back in a second. Well, so there, so Suki doesn't come back until season two. That could have been a, a change they made. They could have just brought Suki into the main gang. That would have been interesting. Um, would have been awkward when they get to the north, though. Yeah, I that like doesn't it. really make sense it's with that. No, Suki just like, like this fights Master Paku. I'm well, about. that would have been a good love triangle. <laughs> uh, UA, Suki, but then how about what about Suki X UA when we get there? Okay, well, oh, yeah, obviously. Totally. Why not? That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> or just, uh, just or just out of pure bitterness, Suki's like uh, I don't even know his name. Uh, the the guy you always betrothed to, yeah, that guy. Uh, Han. They cast him, didn't they? Isn't there mm-hmm. Han? Yeah. Uh, I didn't finish. I didn't finish the whole thing yet. Okay. Yeah, I've I've heard he's in the show. I did. He's such a nothing in the in the original. So yeah, I was really like he has a name. I don't know what it is though. Okay. How about uh, is them the romance to? I mean, we're talking about this, but Suka Saki and Suka. Um, also known as, I remember George being an alternate name for their ship name. Where? Does anyone no, else? No, no. Does I also remember this. this Sam remembers this? This is sounding familiar. I don't. Like, oh. it's maybe, but I... Who, who, wait, okay, who remembers this? I, I this do. is sounding familiar. What? Now that you... Now that you... <laughs> here's, here's yeah, my... Here's... Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a lot of what I remember, but I don't have the best memory in general. But let me tell you what I remember. I believe we called them George. I don't think we made this up, <laughs> but as a an insult. Because they're so boring. And so George is a boring name for a boring ship. Now that sounds wow. like something we do. 
I, I believe that. I believe that was the. I'm gonna have to go on like the Avatar like Reddit. Fan fics, and it, it wasn't George. y'all didn't come up. Somebody with, hit the. I don't think we came machine. up with George, but we I think we had we accepted this and we were haters of Sokka. I, I mean, they were kind of boring in the original. Show. <laughs> I was definitely <laughs> a Suka hater. In the no, this is definitely sounding George. familiar. <laughs> I mean, I I I'm not proud to admit that I shipped Taka. Why are oh, you yeah. proud to admit that? Why are you proud to admit Taka is the ship. Taka is uh, a great s- ship. Just the age difference. And it might like, be canon. Well, fine. it happens down the road, you know. It's fine. It's like, they get older. As they get older, it's only like three or four years. It's fine. And, and then he late, ditches late her, apparently. It's fine. It's well, okay. Yeah. Well, she ditches him. Hope, she don't, hopefully, she don't know, hopefully Avatar Studios will give us more Taka I need to know. context. Yeah, Su Yin is Sokka's daughter canon, please. Please. Um... Uh, how their their interactions they have a, just a lot of scenes where they're like oh they're training together and we almost kiss and then we're I'm showing you the ways of the of the of the war Kyoshi warriors and we like that I thought made their chemistry and romance more like fa- foundational if that makes sense but just her having googly eyes from the get go it makes sense because it's the first man she's seen but I'm not a fan of that trope personally yeah. I, I think the show tries this episode tries to spend enough time yeah I mean building I think it, up there it, it does what it set out to do. The execution was there, I think. I also kind of just like that it's, like, clearly not even some hugely built-up romantic connection. It's just that they just uh, find each other attractive right away. I think the show makes that very clear. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of the same thing for Sokka. Like, he's been hanging out with his sister for a long time. Yes. Yeah, true. And, I mean, again, (laughs) Suki is fucking... She's gorgeous. Um, So I I can't relate. Come on, the actress. No, no, no. Not, you not, guys not can't tell me when she no. took her makeup off. Not, not about Suki being attractive. Like she, she's, she's pretty. But about Taka and Suki having googly eyes, I can't relate to them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, th- I think it, it for me. Which, harkens... like, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not that age or sexuality, yeah. so it's all right. Don't we're, worry about we're it. We're old. Um, it, it does. I think it harkens back to just teenage feelings, crushes yeah. right away. I thought it was cute. Overall, th- they were fine. They're not my problem with this episode. I think they were fine. Your problem with this episode is no Katang. No Katara getting jealous. No, Coco <laughs> is my main problem with this episode. <laughs> I, I thought that, that Coco's being the here. girl with the spoon is Coco, right? Yeah, the I think girl with the spoon's Coco. The one, the one that just come. Yeah, I think that's supposed. That's the equivalent. It's yeah. funny yeah. to me that she brought the spoon. Like, what is like? Yeah, what did she friends. think was going to happen? Look, the like, Avatar <laughs> bent this. To the me. Avatar touched this, and he gave it to me. Yeah, when but they back like to... had a shot of Katara, I was like for a second thinking they were going to go down that road, and I was like, "There's no yeah, way." Yeah. So in the in the original episode, Katara's jealous that the, the is girl she though. Specifically... I didn't really see it uh, that er- is... that early that way. I saw it she... more that she was just sort of like, like, like annoyed I didn't see with it as his romantic... goofing off. Yeah, she I didn't... didn't care. She I didn't see it as a yes. romantic yeah. jealousy. Yeah, yeah I don't think it's a, you know, I don't think it's like. I will say you bring up Coco. Jealousy. I'm like, are we going to do the fortune teller? Can I live through I, that? Again? I, I, yeah, I, I think they cast mm, the fortune teller. I, I did doubt they? that. I would be shocked if Meg was in this show. Just a justice for Meg. They um, cast so many characters. They did. So okay, I uh, the Coco thing. So Ang is like there. She calls him Angie, and they're like f- they're like trying to flirt. All the girls are like flirting with him and stuff. So that's the part that they take out. Yeah. They're like six. <laughs> it's true. Because I won't lie. Like, look, Ang's cute. I put him in my pocket. But like, I mean, y'all like. I mean, they they're children, but they're like, uh, you know, they're teasing and and playful, and they they remove any sort of that element. But they we get the one shot of him playing with the with the, the kids. Which and is, we see him on the air ball, which he is slams nice. into the statue. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, that was uh, uh-huh. lots of people comparing those two shots online. I will say Gordon is very cute. He's yeah, very do, you, do you like him as Aang, Sam? I'm not a fan of his acting, but I'm a fan of his face. <laughs> here's here's my interp. He's cute. Here's my interpretation after two episodes. I think he's great at bringing fun. And like happy when Ang is when Ang is, has to be like goop fun. I think he is bringing that to the show where there is none else. But that being said, when Ang has to demonstrate other emotions, I think he is struggling with. That. Yeah. yeah, all of his facial expressions while talking to Kyoshi, I was like, "Bro, are you okay?" There's the scene in the beginning where he like has, gives like a little eulogy for. Yeah, like, and you can see the tears in Yatsu. his eyes, but they don't leave. But they don't leave. <laughs> Didn't look great, but uh, he's 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 twelve. I mean, it's a lot to ask. Yeah. For sure. Uh, one of Tinch's cheeks. Yes, that's how I feel about him. Give him some milky. <laughs> what milky? What some hot milky? I don't know. What? What do no. kids drink? I, I wouldn't do that. I would just be like, "Oh, you're such a cute, you're such a cute kid. Go play some dog or something." What? What are you laughing at? <laughs> I wouldn't give him milky. Really weird 
Allie? What do you mean? Kids like milk and cookies, right? I don't know. <laughs> Santa Claus? This is what, that was <laughs> what we were missing. I could have said anything <laughs> other than milky, but no, that's what she went with. All right. Okay. So I, that was an amazing Sam reaction. Not going there. <laughs> okay. Can we... <laughs> Can we, let's talk about uh okay i want to talk about our view of suki this is the type of thing that this series allows us to do although we can get into it more if we ever do a rewatch thing uh we we hated suki during the original show um <laughs> let me let me let me let me do tell you my my <laughs> let me tell you my memory of this uh okay and then you guys tell me if you agree i think we were fine with suki in the warriors of kyoshi episode i yeah. i think suki was great there but our view was that Correct me if I'm wrong, and this doesn't necessarily speak for everyone. Once they brought Suki back, she just became Sokka's girlfriend, and she was pretty boring, and she never had any flaws, and she was a such a Suki, which in our in our parlance meant a Mary Sue. Yeah, yeah, that's how I remember it. That is what we said. That's I what we thought. So, do, Allie, what Allie are your thoughts now? Allie has since uh, seen the light. Well, just the idea of, like, a Mary Sue, you know, there's a problematic... And obviously, you know, obviously now there's that. been all this later... Uh, feminist discussion on the concept of a Mary Sue and it can be reductive for female characters and yeah. But I do think that we like we were valid in our frustration that it did seem like they really just put her there to be Sokka's girlfriend and for the most part that was the case but like she had her moments to shine like on the boiling rock when she like kidnapped the ward and she did all those crazy gymnastics she helped in the the final battle. And we said she was such a Suki in that scene when she was uh, But like that yeah that I don't agree with because like she was a badass fully and we just were ignoring it and I, I think, I think we were. I, I think the such a Suki does not necessarily mean that we didn't think she was awesome. I think it was that there was not, there was no depth to her character beyond being awesome and being Sokka's. Uh, yeah, that's girlfriend. fair. But then what was for this? Yeah, this I, w- I mean, I'd even say be. in Warriors of Kyoshi, she didn't really have too much of an arc either because the arc was Sokka's too. Yeah. Like she never really had like a, you know, what does Suki need? You know type deal it was just sort of she was around and she was always associated with Sokka yeah in, yeah. A, in a show with such flawed characters I think it was valid for y'all to be like yeah, what, oh, yeah. Delaney was in, I guess Delaney I was, wasn't part of this this was before my time before Delaney's time I didn't I did like I came to know your Suki hate later and I didn't get it because I was like Suki was such a non entity to me that I it's, it's, it is kind of weird we were so, we, we gave her too much thought yeah, yeah I, that's like, I, told him. I was like why are y'all bringing up suki so, sam, you, sam you just rewatched avatar what were your views now of suki i mean i agree that she is just essentially sokka's girlfriend and that's really all she gets to be and you know she'll do cool moves every so often she helped save appa she helped get them through the serpent's pass but she doesn't really exist outside of Sokka too much and outside of i don't know just being cool warrior girl which it's fine i mean she's ultimately a side character who joins the gang because she's you know romantically involved with Sokka but it would be interesting to see you know, more interpretation about her. So, I don't know. I think this I mean, show this has is... a has an a, a opportunity to give her more stuff, you know. This, this is my thing, though. We we do... To be fair, like, it does... She is presented as, like, being just there for Sokka. But even, like, when she comes back in book two, her motivation is clearly stated. She said, after you left Kyoshi, we wanted to find a way to help people. Mm-hmm. And so we've been, like, traveling around the world ever since. Like, it's not just for Sokka. They were inspired by the Avatar and his group of, like his posse just like doing good things for the world which made them want to like go out into the world and do the good things they were just doing for their island so like which, it's not that, just like, happened, that. that happened off screen though i think it would have been nice to it actually did happen off screen that, yeah. but it was yeah. explained on screen it would be nice to have it you know shown obviously and they could do that I would, here i would say the only time where she really so- shines outside of you know the gang and Sokka specifically is appa's lost yeah. days when you know they find appa and they're going against azula may and ty lee yeah. Nice. I look all these things I don't remember. Um How? Well, that's that's I, why I prepared. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as always. Yeah. Appa's last days would be the last uh, episode I would remember. So to be fair. Uh maybe Great Divide, but it's too iconic. <laughs> what uh, the hell is wrong with you? The that episode actually isn't that bad. Appa's like Great Divide? Yeah, no, it doesn't. Oh, look, well, Sam, everyone loves, people love Great Divide discourse. Sam, what did you think of Great Divide rewatch? Why are we? <laughs> it, it was fine. I mean, it was characterization. It okay, was all right. Yeah. Honestly, Appreciating I the thought character episode, stuff more. I thought the show didn't get 
going narratively until after the Winter Solstice episode, so the Water Mending Scroll. Because it's really just like building the world, build, building up the plot, showing you, hey, this is what's happening. This is so what's and, like, going showing on. Showing you character interactions. And I think that's partly where the show not necessarily fails, but so much of the charm was in the dynamic of Katara, Aang, and Sokka at the, in the beginning of the season. It's just like they're so focused on the mission in this. And there's like, I don't know. It makes sense, if the, especially because they're trying to be like, it's the Game of Thrones audience, whatever, but I don't know. Well, we're also kind of losing that, you know, we kind of, Aang's whole impetus has changed. Like, Kyoshi tells him, you need to go to the north. Before, it was, we need to learn all, we, one, me and Katara need to learn water bending, and we must learn, I need to learn all the bending elements before summer is end. Now it's, something horrible is going to happen to the northern water That's tribes right. up there. And so that, which is, I think this is a good change, I think, in that if you're going to change something, this is interesting. Changing how we come about, like, we need to get to the North right now. Yeah, because, the fact that it's not based around the comet yet. Yeah, and, you know, that because they said they can't, they, you know, they can't really do that right now. And then also, it makes sense if you're going to take out all the traveling. Because, for the for, like, like Sam was saying, like, they're just kind of bebopping around for a little bit. yeah. I am trying to figure out, though, like, why they're going to go to Amashu, but, like, whatever. <laughs> Can I ask you guys, we're going to get on this, like, topic one way or another, but what did you think of Kyoshi being here instead of Roku? Because love the... It, one, Kyoshi's way better than Roku. Also, well, it's hilarious for, yeah. to, to me. To me and Delaney, Roku could still come soon, you know. We, yeah. we don't know yeah. it's not coming. But Roku appears first, right? Uh, mm-hmm. and In the it, original. It, it, it just makes sense to bring Kyoshi into the Kyoshi episode. I think that... For know. sure. I will say, Kyoshi warning, like like Dylan is talking about, about the the attack on the North, um, Jon Snow. Uh, the it's, <laughs> it's it. Uh, why can why does she know the future? I, I that's a why weird. Not? Yeah, that's strange. Why not? Because the, the av- plot says so. I I, 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 avatar ability. Yeah, because the plot says. So. I think the re- half future vision. This is Attack on Titan now. Oh my god. Yes. No, thank you. I think the reason to do this, I guess, is because they want a. Um, a clock i forget what what term am i looking for but they 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 want urgency from the plot before they we and we don't have to wait until episode four or whatever until we're getting to that the portion where we explain the comment um so we bring it in here to just get it earlier in the story because it's more of a plot focused show it's more of a show that needs this uh urgency involved so i guess that makes sense um, yeah yeah it so I, I, yeah, bringing Kyoshi and I yeah I get it. like we said in the game. I think it's a, I think it's a, a thing that makes total sense uh, in corporate because Avatar Day is not going to be an episode you're going to probably care about doing that much in season two with mm. uh, if, of the show if it ever exists. So um, why not bring in elements from that into here? Not and you know obviously we don't have the Chin the Conqueror stuff, so it's not like a straight Avatar Day adaptation. But um, the only, I guess the only part I don't like is it's just like oh Aang doesn't get to to do participate in the fight it's 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 kyoshi instead i do uh, wonder though if we're gonna go like you know Kyoshi's very much you you need to be a merciless warrior that's what being the avatar is about and then we're gonna maybe get to roku and then maybe we'll even get some of the other avatars i think that might be interesting like way of framing right i did i did like that we keep we kept the mercilessness of kyoshi in that one moment and the part of avatars and getting conflicting advice from all the different avatars about their style um so that would be nice too and, we did, uh, and then Aang did say, you know, Aang, which is kind of like, you know, kind, you know, a good change if we're not going to have enough time, you know, to kind of dwell on Aang <laughs> is uh, Aang talking to Katara. You know, I don't want to hurt anyone. I was really powerful and I put people in danger. And then also we might be foreshadowing Aang hurting Katara with the firebending. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um. By the way, to wrap up our previous discussion, but someone removed George from the outline. Uh, to, <laughs> uh, to on our discussion on Suki, our views of Suki. I feel like um, the criticisms of Suki's character are like warranted, um, and I, I, I don't think the original Avatar show should be exempt from criticism on its handling of like uh, female characters, sexism, feminism, etc. Because you know it's very 2005. It's mostly made by men. Um, but that that being said, why did we care so much about Suki? Like to Delaney's point, I feel like maybe our we are uh, the fact that we got a good hate in on Suki was maybe fueled by some general sexist misogyny, time, misogyny. Uh, misogyny of the time. It's like yeah, she's like a flawed, uh, not the best character. Why do we need to care? Like we're allowed to have. Uh, 
characters that aren't uh, so amazing uh, that are women, too. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't think we needed to care so much. But it was kind of fun at the time, I guess. <laughs> I think show this show Suki is probably still a Suki, though, because uh, she d- still does not really have flaws in, in this in this episode. But it's a one. But I Her guess flaw so, is that she, is that she likes Sokka. Sokka. That is that yeah, is a flaw. That's true. That is a flaw. <laughs> Her flaws being attracted to men. I'm still thinking about would you get would you give him Milky? That's still on my mind. <laughs> come on, you have to cut that out. That's no, that was, best, that's that was the best. That was the best. Five moment. minutes of laughter. I meant warm out. milk and cookie. That is a child. I was restraining myself. I think it wasn't the likes content of the statement. I hate all of you. I actually hate all of you. <laughs> Would you, give, would you give Suki Milky? That's the real question. Uh, well, I'm um, not answering that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> not on in that camera. way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so should we talk That's about Zhao? Answer. Yeah. Zhao. Okay. I like Zhao. Do you guys agree that I'm the biggest Zhao fan on the planet? I feel like no one else yeah. is no, on I the remember. record no, is liking Zhao. There's an know. artist. There's a storyboard artist. What was their name? Rough Tune. They're the biggest Zhao fan on the planet. Oh, okay. Okay. You're okay. number two. Fair. I'm sorry. Um, I look, but I will say just during from the spread, I was on the record as loving Zhao. Now, as is the case with a lot of my podcast opinions, I believe it started ironically. Um, (laughs) but I think it just becomes true at some point. So I genuinely do love Zhao, (laughs) even though, I mean, he's like, I do think he's actually a great character in Avatar, but a lot of it is founded upon campiness, um, with Zhao. And this is like not a campy adaptation. So the question is, how are they going to handle him? and like i wasn't that impressed i was like oh my god it's Zhao," and then i was like you're not doing the things he's not doing the Zhao type things which worries you for the finale because it's Zhao's whole point is to be so over the top in the finale like what are they gonna do um Zhao that, the moon slayer yeah yeah that being said i did i was impressed with his actor um in in this episode he's despite thinking he was gonna be blue Ken, Ken Lu. Is that, do you think he's telling the truth about that though? It, it, there's an interview Alex posted that said that uh, he, at first he, he heard he was auditioning for Avatar as a blind audition, then he heard his Avatar. And he I, I it don't, the, he I, thought it was I the feel like he's answer. joking. I don't think that's true. It's a, 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 all blue people Avatar. It, jokes that can happen though. Sometimes they don't know. He like, said he they, didn't know the show before, but they, they yeah. don't know what they're auditioning for and they're just told to. Mm. Like, and sometimes it's like purposeful subterfuge. Um, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, I, I've seen him in. In Lost, in in a few different things, so I've I've always enjoyed him. I, I can tell he's a good actor. I think he brought uh, a lot to the kind of almost nothingness that Zhao has so far. Although I mean, Zhao has complex motivations in this episode, I guess. Well, like, like Mel brought to... up, like at the beginning of the podcast, it's he's more of a bureaucrat. This so like... let's talk about that change because I and I had to read the Avatar wiki, but he's a commander in Avatar, but he's like. He's like a highly regarded. He's like involved in the strategic decisions of the Fire Nation, right? He's also he's still a commander in this. He's just like and he's a commander, but they present it as more of he's like this regional commander of this. Yeah, he's just some yeah. lowly little worm yeah, trying well, to and climb he's the doing ladder. Like, yeah, he's doing the like you know like let me let me deal in information and mm-hmm. manipulation as opposed to just you know like throwing War his, tactic. his shirt off and you know and ba- and he, yeah and he's like an imposing figure when he b- battles zuko but, so what do we think of in the show with him um how would they present him without the campiness do we think that wasn't present or do we think that uh they still managed to have some of the uh, zhao's tv uh, animated effects in the show and if not campy, how would you describe this portrayal of Zhao? I've heard smarmy from a comedy. Yeah, that's like that's, where I go yeah, there with this. It is. He's... From I, it's like a happy medium between the movie and the show. It's like they want him to be super the off movie. brand, like Littlefinger. Dylan, come on. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, Littlefinger vibes, but like not as smart because he's. I don't know. I forgot if we got somewhere that's later in the series and i don't think we have so i'm gonna keep my mouth shut okay yeah i'm hard yeah, to talk about. i i really like his i don't know he's like sniveling and i don't yeah. know i i like him kind of as this climber and i like I do him too. as this like i like that he isn't like already highly regarded and he's trying to like throw his weight around he's just i don't know i i i like the Oh yeah, and that's what I was gonna say is that he's he's still like a, a climber in Avatar. Like he gets promoted, and I assume they'll do the same thing to Admiral. But uh, the you know the difference is he was like kind of already this imposing force, this active force, and everything that was going on. Whereas here he seems more hidden away. Um, 
And yeah, I guess if you're going for that ladder climbing type thing, that's a interest. That's a m- maybe a more natural place to start with a character like this. Um, that being said, so he makes the decision at the end of the episode to report Tozai on the Avatar being found. Do, what equivalent did that happen in Avatar? I don't remember. It didn't. Did that happen? It didn't. <laughs> happen. Yeah, we don't see it. Really How does Ozai find out about Aang? I actually don't remember. He, I, it was from the uh, people on Zuko's ship, like the. Well, like, the, the the people on the ship is no so that's Ozai, Zhao not Zhao, out, right? Ozai. Yeah. Um, wait, what are we? So, what is the question? So they kept like so at the end of this episode, uh, Zhao writes to Ozai saying that. Oh, and uh, like how did Ozai? The Avatar's back. Yeah, I think uh-huh. word just got just, around. Yeah, they, don't, they just never specifically show it. It was well, after... when Aang first goes into the Avatar state in episode three of the original animated series, mm-hmm. like the Fire Sages know and they go send word to the Fire Lord. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the temple eyes closed. The Fire stuff, Sages. Yeah. yeah, we haven't done that yet. Yeah, but then we don't really see him actively being Find aware out. of it until after yeah. the well, battle in the North Pole. When yeah, so like... I, I heard Mike and Brian talk about this on the official Avatar podcast that they, they, they made the decision to not ever show Ozai really until the last season to try to build him up as kind of this off screen and force and then have this like big reveal, which Mike was kind of criticizing his past decisions. He didn't know if that really paid off in the way he anticipated it doing. Um, so this show, they reveal Ozai right away in the end of this episode, which we see uh, with Daniel Day Kim. He's um, awesome. I, yeah, I think he's great in this. Yeah. That's like, I mean, one I'm of not, se- I'm not like really you, seen you nailed anything it so far, but um, yeah, we it's, love it's him. It's just very hard because like of what you said, Mike had Ozai not be on screen until book three that like we're getting him immediately here. It's very jarring to compare the two. Especially because Ozai is not really a super, he's not a person character. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, so this is another, I feel like natural change. They should, they can easily make, bring Ozai into the fold earlier. I think seems, it's a great seems decision. like it makes sense. A very good decision. The- and it makes just the, mm-hmm. the whole fire nation, read better like the interactions between all the characters that include him or that i guess maybe this is a natural change because of the change to zhao's character because zhao is kind of the face of the fire nation in yeah yeah he was yeah so if you so if you take the uh commanding force from zhao and make him more of a little finger as opposed to more of like an active fighter and uh strategist then you kind of need that role filled that, that you then bring Ozai in. So maybe they change out because they bring Ozai in. Maybe it's at the same time. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think these are all really interesting, like tweaks you can make to when you're when you're adapting the show. Um, that being said, again, changing Zhao, I feel like is, is pretty necessary. I'm interested to see what they do with him. But I, I'm, I guess have, I, I'm at least happy that it's like a, it stands out as like one of the better performances thus far. So we're we're trying to give the characters due again. I think bringing him into this episode is a good idea. Getting him into the fold early. I'm is he is he going to be in like every episode? That'll be kind of be interesting because book one kind of has the dual villains with with Zhao and Zuko to differing effects. He's a, uh, he's a main. He's credited as a main uh, yeah. character. So, so so and how the animated show handles it was I guess you know Zhao is not in every episode or in, a, yeah. in every plot line. Um, so that'll be interesting to see how that's how that's handled. Um, I, you like him talking to Iro. They're both kind of being coy um, with what they're saying. I think that's a fun dynamic. Uh, but yeah, we're moving the Agni Kai. Uh, so Ooh. my question, my question was, is that because we are going to show the Zuko Ozai flashback Agni Kai in extreme detail? And we want we don't want to upstage that with an Agni Kai early on. That's the only reason I can probably. Kind of think of. probably that was my assumption. Yeah, because I thought about it, I'm like, this is a hallmark moment of Avatar early on. Um, and that's where you get, like, the music as well. Yeah. For, and so why take it out? I guess that would make sense if we're replacing it with another thing. That being said, as a... Or or know, they're going to Agni Kai and Zuko flashes back to, the, like, his first Agni Kai. He has like, a traumatic oh. response. Yeah, could do two at once. Um, you could have done that here, I guess. Uh, I well, could, now they're going to be like... They're kind of, oh, they're kind of hint. Like they're they're going to actually like work together as opposed to just trying to beat the other to the avatar. So you know maybe we'll get some Zuko's like he's trying to blah 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 and yeah. Well, they they try to propose. Oh, Iroh tries to propose they or Zhao proposes they want to work together, and then he immediately goes back on it and writes to Ozai, right? So, um, we will see what that entails. But presumably Zuko will not really want to work with him if he finds out his dad knows. I loved Zuko's line. Please don't tell anyone. Like, 
Zuko. It was so wonderful. Yo, don't tell anyone. Like, okay, Zuko, calm Zuko, down. yeah, he he really does is not being shown as not having any social grace thus far. <laughs> Hilarious. Like, no, I feel like even even more than animated Zuko. That he is sixteen. Yeah. He ran. And just, that was you know, incredible I, delivery. I got the impression that they aged up both Zuko and Sokka. They did age up Zuko. I don't know if they aged up Sokka. How, how like, old Sokka's supposed to be? Sokka seems closer to like 17 to me. He's 16. They aged up Zuko to 17, mm. for what it's worth. He Presumably they up. aged Azula, presumably. But we haven't seen her yet. Um, I guess Sokka is 16 in the show. I guess. He was 15. He's 15? Okay, so yeah. Up, yeah. But yeah, again, so, as we, yeah, so then they did as we mentioned, up. all the Avatar ages are so weird. Oh, I thought he was 16 in the show. Okay. I think by the end he's supposed to be 16. They all, yeah. And they all age a year throughout the course of Avatar. Years. Well, okay, so Aang's 12, Katara's 14, Sokka's 15, Azula's Zuko's 14, Zuko's 16. Toph is 12 also. But... And no one knows how old Suki is because she's not a character. <laughs> yeah, I she could be 25. Like... <laughs> <laughs> or something. Um, any, other, any other Zhao thoughts so far? I like his sideburns. They are they are quite magnificent. I think they do a good job with the look, yeah. That one lieutenant, Lieutenant G, has way bigger sideburns than he does. It's true, you're That's right. That's the no, guy, he's Lieutenant him, G from like, the show, well. remember him? He was like the one member of the crew that we got a name. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you got a name did from the Did he keep his name? Episode. It's the same yeah. name? He, yeah. he, didn't, he didn't talk in this episode. So oh, that's I amazing. I assume he comes back later, but he he was G, G in the first episode. Oh, he, will... no, they kept his name from the animated show. Okay. Yeah, that's what I yeah, meant. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, cool. I will say out of all the facial hair, I think it's um it all looks very glued on and it's not my favorite costuming choice. <laughs> even even Iros? Yes. Yeah, yeah the 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 hair uh, the hair yeah, the, the work is not um, fantastic. No. I say is like not a professional in this space. Like I yeah, no yeah, idea, of course. but I'm using like, the I'm I'm just some rando, but I like, will yeah. say I, I think Monk Gyatso looked his mustache was quite spectacular. I miss Gatso already. We didn't even talk about Zuko's scar. It's not, not a scar. I'm mad it. about it. It could be more scary. I'm not fine. a professional makeup designer either, so I'm not going to say anything. But I'm. It's, I it's, it, it looks, I guess, realistic, right? No, maybe. I agree. maybe. Does it though? Because no, it like... could have been way worse. Yeah. It's it's not uh, as prominent. As yeah, it was. They, if they were trying to go for the Game of Thrones audience, they could have done the Game of Thrones makeup for that. It's also funny to me that, like, you know, like in the this Agni Kai when when Ozai messed him up, it's like he just gently brushed part of his face with a little bit of fire, and like it just like it. That's how it looks. Like the yeah, fact yeah. that like he's got one scar in one specific spot. Um, <laughs> it's prominent. really prominent on his face, and they were like, "Nah, nowhere else." Well, I just mean like. In the sh- like in the live action, it's just not as prominent as it should be. Yeah, I guess it might be a hard thing to make look good, so it's better yeah, to be a little bit more good. subtle with a okay. Uh, yeah, gnarly. Probably. So, um, how about who have we talked about here? Uh, Momo. Momo. <laughs> Momo. We love Momo. Wait, so yeah, on the last podcast, you got we were like, what if he shows up in Ang's shirt? He was in a bag, right? He was in a bag. Yeah. And they and they hadn't left the air temple, which it seems like they're about to leave, but he's still there. Which also, is Sokka great. Was like, I bet you taste like chicken. I'm like, just chicken? Just chicken. Yeah, I mean, they're struggling with chicken. the hybrid animals, honestly. <laughs> like, they do mention the whale. So, uh, Iroh talks about that. So there's a hybrid something that Iroh talks about. Um, yeah, chicken. I don't know. I guess, I guess Momo and Sokka were... Yeah, harkens back to actual avatar to some know. extent they just keep just keep harassing him it's great yeah we need so momo will momo fight in the show because he does uh stop <laughs> actual things i think that uh, he was Super throwing rocks seen. at the firebenders oh he was yeah okay there you go. so let's do that uh i think momo looks good i i thought you know there's an element of like photo realisticness looking to them like kind of uncanny to him and Appa to some extent, but I think they look good. He looks so rabid. He, does. <laughs> he looks like ill. <laughs> yeah, he looks Gotta... um I guess scrungy could be a word to use. Maybe he'll it. be more uh domesticated when later on. Uh, just needs his rapey shots. Yeah, he's <laughs> I mean you probably should bring him to the vet after you just ran take him from this a hundred years island. With uh, God, how unclear- did he live? It wasn't even like he's the only thing on that. Well, yeah, I guess they just wiped out the airbenders. Did, did, we, did we ever see other? He was lemurs? eating fruits because that's no. why they named him Momo. 
I don't remember. In, in Korra, like, do we see any? Yeah. Oops. Yeah, right? Popo. Yeah. Or what, Pokey, whatever the... Pokey. Pokey. Like, how that... <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember Mike and Brian were like, um, how do they bring back the flying bison? Like, I don't even remember. They, I don't know. They, they like, found them somewhere. Yeah, they found. They were like, oh, yeah, they, they found the flying bison. Oh, we conveniently them. found them. Okay. Yeah. I just don't okay. remember that. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's rule of cool. Yeah, I think that's. that's oh, true. I want to talk about um, the spirit world. Uh, hurts my eyes. Yeah. So did did we interpret this, Delaney? This is the spirit world. I assume that he's that he's going into. I think we're going to see more of it later. But so in in uh, 107 or whatever, when Aang goes in the spirit world for the first time to talk to Roku. He does go in the spare world, right? But it doesn't like look like this, I guess. Yeah, he just has like rocks behind him. Here it's just like this blur. It's kinda, the forest. Like, like forest. That's like they're tripping on some psychedelic, I don't know. That is exactly what it looks like, indeed. Yeah. I like uh, it. Yeah, it's I mean it's it's gonna be interesting how they portray the spare world. This is just a taste. I don't know if i I might get sick. If it's gonna look like this and then <laughs> I'm gonna be thrown up. Like I get motion sick. It's it's gonna be rough on me. Yeah, that is kind of not a good thing. I thought it was appropriately disorienting. That's fair. Mm. That's fair. That's probably what they're going. For, I yeah. was indeed disoriented. <laughs> what would you do if you were thrown into another world and this giant crying. woman Eight was yelling woman. at you? I would cry. Oh, she was very giant. Didn't they say they put her up on a box as well? Yes, the actress. Yes. She looked very giant, and I respect she is them to be... staying true to how Kyoshi was like seven feet tall or something like that. <laughs> yeah, for some reason. Um, oh yeah, so we referenced the Kyoshi backstory from the book. I think Katara says she was an orphan, you know. So until she was adopted by a wealthy family. Yeah. So that wasn't in the show, correct? They, they this is yeah a... nothing about Kyoshi except for her killing people was in the show. So they're Kyoshi novels that this is coming from. You yeah. should read those, by the way, audience, please. <laughs> They're very good. She's, She's bullying all of us too. Don't can't worry. remember where she gets adopted from. I read this. She's like a uh... by the family who was um. I mean, yeah. But what is she? Novel. What is she before? What was she like, She's like a. Or, yeah, she's an orphan girl? on the street. She and she, she where? goes into the house where they're like <laughs> they look at the toys for to find out if you're the avatar, and she takes one and then takes off. Yeah, and, and then the airbending master who's supposed to be she has some the avatar, mentor, right? Yeah, yeah, the airbending master. Okay. That's the part I remember. Question. Uh, so, like, did she live on Kyoshi Island or somewhere else? No. She lived in... I don't remember. Not the Kyoshi not to, Island. Not to start with, right? She eventually. created Kyoshi Island. Did she bring it out of the sea? Or you Even though it? the show clearly Wasn't states the... she was born yeah, there. Yeah. Was, so this this was, was in Avatar, Joe. Maybe, maybe, like, she was born on what is now Kyoshi Island, and at the time, it, it isn't. I forgot oh, what okay. it's called. In, in Avatar, she, she, she separates it, right? Like yes. Yeah. 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 That, okay, I do remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes so. Kyoshi Island, but she mm-hmm. was, like, born in the spot that the village... Yeah, was. that, like, the okay. island is on. Does like the Kyoshi thing. portrayal here want make you want to see a full Kyoshi movie adaptation? Yeah. Uh, Not really. No. Well, oh. live action? No, animated for Avatar Studios. I, mean, I guess so. No, I don't want it to be a movie. I'd rather a show. Yeah, but I also really like coming. the books. The books are really and, good. I like. I mean, I think animation would be the only way to do it, but I still think the books on their own are pretty <laughs> good enough. But it would be it would be a very good adult animated show. Lots yeah, of nobody wants say, to read anymore, series, though. <laughs> we have to watch with our eyes. <laughs> with our eyeballs. That's you smart. can watch words on a page with your eyeballs. But then you have to process them more. And you have to imagine what it looks like. I don't have yeah, enough I mean, RAM for that, Allie. <laughs> <laughs> you have enough RAM for a whole for series. I mean, that's, why they did, that's why they did comics, to help if with we the get visualization. A series, I also no, want I'm a Yangshan series, because it's like spy novel. Very good as well. You should read those too. Oh, I forgot that she's got a. Yeah, she's they got. All, they, they, all got they both have they two. They all got YA books. Damn. Just two, just the two so far, and then Roku's ca- coming this summer. Oh, or I what about about what about Kurok? Okay, if mm. Roku and Sozin aren't. Uh... Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna kiss. They have to kiss. They exploit each other's bodies, and it's gonna. Oh be yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was definitely bodies. a thing. You know it happened. I'm, I'm counting on this author. I'm not. I'm, one. I'm with you. It's just. I, I want to have faith in this person. It's a different author than the Kyoshi and Yang Chen novels, but I, I, I want to believe. Oh, but totally. with this show, I mean, as someone who read the novels, and like I was screaming to my other friend who has read the novels too, that like, oh my god, Kyoshi reference, and it like is pretty much exactly from the book even though it's just a hint that made me really excited 
Nice. Like, yeah, like I like, nice I like that they referenced it. It's that, the, that's... the things that they choose to keep continuity with canon and the, cho- the things they choose to change is mind-boggling to me. I agree. Like, but right now, it seems a bit nonsensical. But... Like, I'm. it's cool that they chose to, like, reference her backstory for five seconds, but then they take away, like, Aang and Katara's dynamic as a whole. Like, not even romantically, just, like, friends. But, like, the fact that they interacted in that, like, whole underground, wherever they were, just talking about the past avatars was cute. Like, I think, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. In the, uh, whatever they call it, in the shrine. Yeah. 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 Which they, which they say you can only channel in the shrine, which I can't remember was, if that was specifically stated in the show, but I guess that checks out with what happened in Avatar, actually. I thought it um, was in Avatar. I thought it was because it was the solstice. That could be. I yeah, mean, there's. He had to go to the temple. There was the Kyoshi shrine in Avatar Day, I believe. And Truthfully, then, uh, they just kind of did it whenever. Like, yeah, Roku it, would just pop yeah. in the Aang, like, yo, I need to talk to you. Yeah. Come here. Did he manifest his Aang, or <laughs> did he, like, pop no, in No, he would Aang. manifest himself to Aang sometimes. And then sometimes it's like, oh, come to my uh, island, because you need to be here, plot-wise. Yeah, yeah you're right. They just did whatever. Right. Seems right. Um, other changes. Okay, how about Suki's mom, apparently named Yukari. She was hot. Uh, did not oh say God. that on the show. <laughs> she was hot. What do you want from I me? I agree. She's hot. 100% correct. Everyone on that island is gorgeous. Seems to be a natural change to me. Change the elder from a guy to a woman and yeah. Suki's mom. It's a matriarchy. Yep. It makes yeah. way more sense. I liked her. It does. I agree. Uh, yeah, I mean, if she's, I think, yeah, one of the, if she was supposed to be a character, I think we should have seen more. Uh, she was that. fighting with her fans. Yeah. She was. Sure. Well, who is she as a person? Though? Oh, come on. I don't know. What? The leader. Do you think she's related she's to Kiyoshi? Like, she's her great, 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 oh. great. Yeah, we never really got into awesome. that, right? If Suki was related to Kiyoshi, I don't think we ever. That'd be cool. I'm That'd making cool. a canon in my heart. Yeah. And okay, <laughs> instead of going to this last uh, change, I'm going to leave this open as we <laughs> ask Mel. Okay. I've th- I thought I, I gave some thoughts. Hidden Zutara. <laughs> From episode two, Warriors. They made it tough on me this time by taking away the... Uh... They do interact in this episode. They do. Yeah. See, yes, they see, they look eyeballs at each other, <laughs> which is the first step in all things. But, you know, my feeling is that it's not so much in um, the, the sort of blatant interactions and, and seeing each other, but more in, you know, what what does he got in that journal that he's so so <laughs> upset <laughs> is, is gone from his uh, his his room, and I think it's pretty clear that what he's got in that journal that he's so uh, afraid to uh, his deep to have out in the world is all his his secret deep thoughts and and longings um, after having the brief glimpse at the Southern Water Tribe of. Uh, the the woman he knew as that one chick because uh, he did not have a name. See, I you know I know this is hidden Zatara, but like I it's all about Aang. He's like, oh man, I'm really gay. No, for it's the- a code. It's a code. That's something you're not getting here. Aang it's means Katara in the journal. So yeah. hidden Zutara is the beard for his love for Aang. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Aang <laughs> is good. the beard no, for that, his yeah. love for. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> that makes more sense. So, wow. so you know, what it's going to come out. Tr- it's going to come out when we when we, he finally gets that journal back, and we're going to see him pouring over the pages to make sure there's no missing pages. You're going to see. You all Dear see. Diary or will or will Aang see it? Your diary, exactly. I saw the most incredible water tribe girl, <laughs> something like that, right? Her hair, I love a tiny that hair diary. diary. He oh, ran. Yeah. Also, the fact that like and he calls it his diary, like. No, it's he's his not notebook. ashamed. His he notebook. does not call it his diary, but he calls his notebook. Um, it's his diary. It is his diary. It's his creepy Zodiac Killer notebook. So I like this hidden. Yeah, I like this hidden Zutara from Mel. But the, in addition, they they fa- they face they face off in this episode briefly. Um, when's the first time they fight in the show? Because uh... in the finale, it's a rematch. Yes. This time, it's not going to be much of a rematch. It's um. What... Is it? The, it's. Pirate, the pirate episode. Yeah. Right? Oh, it's the, scroll, the pirate. Yeah. Okay, well, so yeah, this is also uh, them incorporating 109 into this episode. The yeah. rematch yeah. you're talking about is like they fight at the Spirit Oasis in the finale, and then they fight again in like the tundra when they're trying to get Ang back. Oh, they fight twice in the finale. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. But the, the first, first time, time they, they square up is uh, but they, they, the pirates. Well, of course, they're Episode classic nine, interactions. Yeah. Yeah, so Mel, as a as our resident hidden Zutarian, do you think that this episode makes up for them removing the waterbending scroll? I'm actually it, it's interesting to me because I totally was like when when he popped up and she was you know they were getting ready to she was like oh you know they, they kind of had their their brief face off moment I was like okay here we go this is they're gonna push the the agenda here and I was surprised that they did not um, disappointed one might say. It's because there's no agenda to push. It's fate. <laughs> well, no, but you would... like, you know, I feel like that was like a, a thing that was floating around on the internet, um, you know, a, a lot of times. You would think it's like an adaptation, an edgy adaptation where they're going to change stuff. Oh, are we going to do Zutara? Like, that's actually a question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty clear signal from this episode. Yeah, they, they, they took out like the main, the, main, uh, <laughs> the main part of it from this season. Yeah. Um, and the thing that kind of like you know launched the whole, the whole thing, like they the they sort thing. of removed that interaction. Um, yeah. So. And the one that we do see, I mean, and Zuko just sees like I'm, I'm warning you. I mean, look, he does warn her. Maybe I will cares say about that. I, I will say that. I was like, you know, that was kind of nice. <laughs> I will kill you if you don't move. That's yeah, so nice. But, but yeah, I mean, I mean, he oh could have just immediately started fighting. So yeah, it seems to get out of character for him. He wants her. Yeah, it, I, I do. I, well, it's, it's a genuine question. I wonder why in his he was not as single minded in his effort. I mean, I he was, but he stopped for just, a second. He's not a you know. We know ultimately that he's not a bad person. You know, like that's his whole yeah. deal is that he, well, this whole thing happened is because he was trying to save the lives of you know people he didn't know and and. You know, never yeah, really. He does. He is that. It's a glimpse. I, yeah, it's probably intended by the show as a glimpse into his not a. Uh, I don't know what I was going to say, kind heart, but not terrible art. Uh, so that's probably what I intend. His mediocre that. heart. Yeah. He, Sam, what do you think of Hidden Zutara being back? He's too old for her. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, 17. That's, that's why it's hidden. Yeah, it's not well, legal. It is, it, it, depending I, on what state you're in. <laughs> please. <laughs> I don't know. I, I appreciate Zuko just being being alone, as the episode title goes back in the day. I just I like him by himself. Season two. No, so you're not you're not rooting for May to be in the live action May and Zuko. I I didn't care about that either. That was pretty. <laughs> that was a pretty boring ship. You didn't like them in the rewatch? No, I like May. Aww. Yeah, I like May. I mean, May is cool. I just I didn't care for them together. It just it didn't. I, I, don't, know. I don't want to spoil the comics, but I, I got a little tore up. Oh yeah, no, I I find those comics very frustrating for a yeah, lot of reasons. They're weird. I I did not feel any shipping while I rewatched the original. None none of the ships. No. Not even Taka. I mean a little bit because I <laughs> was a big fan of it and I liked Toph so much, but like no, I'm I'm not I'm not too into that anymore. Which I mean, I think that's Seems like I'm better than all of you. I grew up. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, that's not what I'm saying. Um what I mean is I feel like that kind of thing might be a little bit reflected in the show, like there isn't that much happening romance wise apart from whatever's going on with Sokka and Suki here, um, thus far at least. It's just you know, it, it, it's it's a different different demographic, as you know, everybody's saying. So there isn't an appetite for, you know, Aang and Katara cute moments or like Zutara moments and stuff like that, because it's a different audience. Then and, and plus, yeah. like we know how it ends ultimately, so yeah, yeah. they don't have to do the work, right? To like, they're like, yeah, like you know, we we can save this stuff because you know ultimately what's going to end up happening. So we don't yeah. have to invest as much time into into building it up because there's that built-in audience expectation. And as we discussed last episode, this potential second season would be you know filmed many years after the season was filmed, and the characters would the actors many would be years? older. They're going to add the. First well, season many. was filmed late 2021. So okay, at this well, point, yeah. yeah. And they have, I don't, to my knowledge, they haven't filmed the season two yet. Um, and so, growth spurt. Puberty, right, so Aang, he's suddenly I, like three well, feet. Well, that's the thing. Aang, Gordon's Aang, voice Aang Aang would be, three octaves. Yeah, Aang Katara would probably be more palatable if they look older. So, and you could do Suko Katara teasing at that, at that point as well, since um, there's not that weird age gap any i mean there still is but they'll be older i guess um so there's more potential for that down the road um but i am expecting them to do Saka ua still so i guess they still the only sako is the only one that gets the romance Um, he's he's the heartthrob he's the lover boy 
I guess that's consistent <laughs> characterization. Yeah. Water I, I don't know. The thing about Sokka in the original, like, yeah, he had, like, the romance and stuff. He was the older kid apart from Zuko. But, like, he also, he had those flaws. Like, you know, he was sexist. He was kind of a meathead. He was kind of mean. And, you know, he isn't that anymore, really. So, I don't know. It, it's... It just feels like they're they're scrubbing him of a lot of his original characteristics in order to make him more palatable, palatable as we were talking about earlier. And I don't want to be cynical about it, but it does feel like there might be a little bit of uh, marketing sort of stuff happening. Like, oh, you should like Sokka. He is so cool. Poor little Meow Meow Sokka. <laughs> I don't know if that's what that means. <laughs> Is that give, what that you, means? Would, do I don't you want to give Do you want to give Sokka Milky? Is that what you're saying? I, okay, <laughs> I don't. More about Sokka. Sokka. <laughs> he can do nothing wrong. Da, 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 da. I'm out. <laughs> I guess his main flaw is that he's like awkward. He's like from a he's like a country bumpkin. Now that's like that's his, his flaw. flaw. But like, it's but it's very likable. I don't know. Like, yeah, it, it makes him more attractive than the other Sokka. He's just some guy, really. She's everything. He's just Ken. Exactly. He really is a Ken in this show. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Man. Oh man, who's Barbie? I think Aang's Barbie. Suki. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think Suki. Or Suki yeah. is Barbie. In this episode. Suki, no, I yeah. agree. I think Aang's Barbie. <laughs> oh my god. That's uh, true though, because he has all of the reincarnations. Like Barbie has all of the different that's, careers. Yeah, that's what. That's exactly. We got, right. sure. we got Doctor sure. Avatar. We've got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has Prince anyone made that Avatar? parody? Yeah. Someone has to do it if they haven't already. Any any other thoughts on this Katara Zuko fight? It was I thought it was strange, like the pacing of it again. The fight scenes pacing is always strange. When you're translating this sort of animated masterpiece of like martial arts mixed with elements into live action, it's never gonna look right. Like the the CG looks good, but the like f- the physicality of everything it just feels off. And I get, I get that Katara is also not like a master yet, but it didn't even seem like she tried that hard. But I guess because she's she traumatized did, I mean, she as did well. Knock them all down, which was pretty cool. She's also traumatized, so I, I, I liked her practicing bending. That, that's yeah, that's that was cool really good. Yeah, I like that, that scene. I'd like to see more. I, of yeah, that. I'm to be determined on if well, for a larger scale fight. I know we get Kyoshi bending all the elements. I thought that was that generally was looked sick. good. That was amazing. So. I think they delivered eventually, but I'm still, you know, they haven't really had a huge fight yet on the show. So to be determined, I Your guess, point I though, guess Kiyoshi's the Kiyoshi scene made me more hype for actual like big fights because that looked really good. Oh, I was super yeah, you, cool. She was scared. You got her with all the elements in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, but it, she, I, was I, doing, she was doing the ball. She's like, here's the element ball. It makes me want to see Aang do stuff. Yeah. The fact that we got Kyoshi there. So I'm still surprised maybe that's he good. hasn't bent water once or hasn't tried to. Like, especially after thinking, Katara being like, like, you should practice. Yeah. I was expecting her to, like, be like, practice. Yeah, they with just me splash each other. He's he supposed doesn't really to be, bend. like, by the end of the, like, pretty proficient by the end of the that's season. What, that's what we got to pick like, up the pace. <laughs> you know, he'll practice water in Omashu. It's such a natural fit. <laughs> Yeah, Maybe surrounded have, by. Do they have it. underground rivers or something? They have, I feel yeah, like. they have like a sewer, sewer system. <laughs> yeah, he'll practice in the sewers. Hoop bending. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Amashu, by the way, as having not seen that episode, this it, it, adapting that is one of the silliest episodes of Avatar. I feel like. Yeah. Yes. Re- if they're not doing silly, you really got to change that episode a lot uh, to make it work for this show. So. I guess I'm hopeful because I want to see changes. Like so. he literally encases them in rock candy. Like what are we doing? They're, they're just in rock candy for half the episode. I assume we're not getting rock candy. Like that would be right. wild for the show. But they should. They should do the rock candy, even though it's it's not. It's like one of the stupider make, things in in make original it Avatar. Even scarier. Like they should make it like so <laughs> dire, and it's still <laughs> rock candy. Actually, scary rock candy. Um, oh yeah, so someone's there on here on the outline. By the way, we said there's no uh, intro last episode. There's the, there's like a title card. I mean, it's not really an intro. Yeah. But the, the, I like the, the brushstroke motif. Okay, I, uh, so I'm, I have like my washer and my dryer on while I'm watching this episode, <laughs> and it's just like fire, whoosh, air. Like and they're just like sounds, and they're like, "Here's the show." And I was like, "Really? That's what that's what you did?" Yeah, we just we just go in. So we go with Netflix in the beginning, and then we just get the title card and the episode card. Um, I, I still that. wish they did a Game of Thrones Avatar map. Intro. I agree. Yeah. Oh, uh, so the brush strokes. So in the original series, the um, 
you know, the, the characters were like the titles. I can't tell yet. Did, were they different? Um, oh, I think I it's like the earth, like the, the, the symbols. Like the, you're talking about the yeah, Chinese the characters they're using? Yeah, they change depending yes. on, I will tell you right now, they will change depending on where they are. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. I just, cause I just cool. meant like, you know, when they're like, Aang, and then they do the character. Yeah, no, it's it's not. It's something you'll see in like, okay. the next so episode. it'll change. Okay, yeah. cool. Anything else from the episode itself uh, we've not brought up? I'm trying to go through your outline. I mean, there's Get definitely stuff on. we haven't talked about, but... So is Sokka yeah. just going to whip out the fan? That'd be cool. Oh, yeah, so Sokka gets the fan at the end. That's cool. I like that. And I thought it would have been cute boomerang. if, like, Suki got his... Not Boomerang, but, like, the other stupid weapon. Did he, he, he didn't even say Boomerang, did he? No. He, he didn't like, call it Boom... boom did, like, he's, he, he's like, check out my weapon, I Suki. Made it he's like, I made it myself. I made it myself. But it's, 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 this like, is Boomerang! <laughs> Yeah, how did you? <laughs> how did he forge question. that? Him like it, it, there's a whole very... episode of him forging a weapon later. Why not? Yeah, what is, oh, how did yeah. he make this? One? That's true. <laughs> I mean, I him. There was yeah, another meteorite at the South Pole. Oh, That's how he made the boomerang. Oh, I liked I liked uh, Suki talking to Sok about their non-benders, so they have to be extra. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah, that was cool. That was good. It's a good part. Um, oh yeah, we didn't talk about the this. I think I mentioned it on the last podcast, and it, I, it was a mistake. It was in this episode. His um, flashback to being too good at bending. Yes, Aang yeah. has a flash as a flashback. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't. Have he to almost learn. killed I that to learn that guy. Strength. He just knocked those kids right off the cliff. So we saw at least one uh, Southern Air Temple flashback, which mm-hmm. we get multiple of in the show. So we'll see. But I, I like seeing that. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, this uh, this was on my list of dislikes. The running joke of "We got to put a bell on you, Suki." Oh, yeah, I didn't like that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wasn't that that cla- was also that was definitely such a Buffy modern joke that happened humor. later in the series. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> most jokes are originally Buffy jokes. I feel yeah. like in television at this. I point. mean, this is you know, jokes about cows and bells. Probably goes back. <laughs> well, I'm not centuries. saying it invented it, but you know, TV <laughs> tropes exist for a reason. No, every, I, everything's Buffy. Mills right. My, my, well, yeah, I, 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 this felt extremely dated. For I mean, I guess Avatar takes place right in the relative past, but uh, yeah, and I, I, I don't. I was like, why? Well, this, I, this wasn't particularly funny. I, I feel like this shows. Oh yeah, and then there's this one moment where. Um, Sok and Suki are talking, and Suki's like, "Actually, we're the Kyoshi Warriors," and she explains what they are. And Sok is like, "Oh, you got me!" Like it was like an insult. Um, I was like, "You really just explained it, though." I don't feel like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really a comeback. Yeah. So I, I, I thought a lot of the attempted humor was uh, awkward in this episode. Yeah. They really need some sound effects and some funny music cues. But um, yeah. yeah, they they need some zaniness. Like they well, need some camp. Look, as long as I we see the Cabbage so. Man in a month. Well, you oh, just no, no. Speaking of, no foaming at the mouth guy. Yeah, where is he? Oh my god, you're right. No we, foaming. We, they've, the bra- they've bragged about how we're seeing Cabbage Guy and they're bringing back the original voice oh, actor. But not foaming. But, but no foaming. Robbed. Like, where is he? He's also iconic. Robbed. I agree. We saw him twice. Yeah. Well, we're, ne- we're definitely not getting Avatar Day in season two, so we probably won't see him at all now. Rip foamy, they killed him. That's it's another. It's like we can't do foamy. That's uh, I mean, I don't know. Is foamy? It's too camp. Uh, is it too camp? Is it ableist in some fashion? Right? Oh, like is it yeah, like probably? But like it's it's they're, they're just having no fun. There's no ver. They can <laughs> do a version it, of foamy that fits for the show. Do you guys just yeah, have fun? They can just have a guy tonally. in the background with an avatar scroll, and he's like, "Yeah, I love the avatar." But no. If he, yeah, what if he has I, like fake tattoos? They they took out the whole like <laughs> a, any enthusiasm for the avatar. They took all of that out, I guess. You know, like uh, yeah, because the, they're the, kid, the, the kids were excited that he's an airbender, but that's, but because like, of like the of fear that Yukari instilled in her people is like don't trust anybody because they could come and mess everything up. Yeah, yeah. Anything else from the episode? The costumes were done really well. I know they like they emphasized. I, I think I remember from the press kit that they were like the feast is like going to be specifically Japanese food, and it was all dessert festival food. And I was like, they're having this for breakfast. I guess, I mean, I guess they like rolled out the stops so for the harsh. avatar, but it made me very hungry. They had Dongo Dylan. Oh yeah, Momo oh yeah, yeah. Mom, that was what Momo had. Yeah, yeah. Dongo Daikazoku. <laughs> oh I, I, I thought the Kyoshi makeup looked really good. Yeah. Yeah, I like the addition of the gold on the eyes. 
It's yeah. They, I'm looking at the our screen cap of it. It looks good. Yeah. Uh, I, I, visually, I'm I'm good generally with yeah. everything. I know there's some specific things here or there. Yeah, like the air people have commented on not liking or whatever, but um, not it. I'm I'm generally a fan of everything visually. It's not that's not the issue here. I wish they used a different camera or like a different lens or something. <laughs> Well, no, That's it's just like as there, there's something with the settings and the costumes. It just doesn't feel right. Like it looks, it looks good, and like I can really, I can respect the artistry of everything. They're like we filmed just... Comic Con. Part of yeah. what the problem might be, and I was talking to Manu about this yesterday. We were just talking oh. just about the show. I, I think it feels like sometimes the writer. Of the episode, I guess, or like the writing team of each episode versus the director didn't necessarily share the same vision. Like the way the camera is directed sometimes with certain scenes that like maybe the dialogue is supposed to be Mm. represented as serious, but it just comes off as funny or like camp when it's not supposed to be. There's like a disconnect there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It just there's there's something not working with my eye <laughs> on this, and it, it's, something's off. Like not not just like Uncanny Valley. Like that's going to happen with CG. It, it's I don't know. Just something like the camera just looks too HD. We need some. I don't know, dude. Like we we need something else. Yeah, we need. I mean, it we doesn't, need the world doesn't look lived in. Yeah, exactly. It just looks like we're on a soundstage. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that, that's what I mean, Jeff we was are, saying. But like... That's what Jeff said last podcast about his, about his issues with the costumes. Was it they didn't feel it didn't feel lived in for the Southern Water Tribe, but, and they're supposed to be kind of more run down. You could apply that to Kyoshi, although I guess a little nicer there. But yeah, it, everything does feel very pristine. Yeah. I guess I think it's fair. We need some dirt. Um, some dirt. Some dirt. Get that. Get that. The Mirthbenders here. Yeah. They perfect. did. Aang was dirty after he fought as Kyoshi. Yeah. After he fell down in the dirt, That's then he good. was dirty. That's good. Well, he needs to spread it to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Airbin dirt on everyone. No, no spreading yeah. germs. Wear a okay, mask. Let's, let's talk about yes. Let's talk about our uh, feedback um, that we got from people. Thank you for those who commented or wrote in everywhere. Podcast at overly animated. Dot com. We got a uh, comment. Yes, hello. Uh, we got a comment from Earthly Cactus, um, a fan that we uh happy we're back. Uh, it's, uh, so glad you are doing podcasts. Love having this companion piece to enjoy the show. Your podcast filled with so much joy, and I can't believe we got you all back for this. It's such a treat. Thank you for doing this. Yay! Yay. Thank you for listening. Uh, yes, thank you. They ask about uh, Netflix's One Piece uh, live action uh, show as a comparison, which I have not seen. Does anyone have any comments on? Um, Has anyone compared to those? seen it? No. No, I thought you would. I did see other <laughs> other people on Twitter comparing it. Just because I'm a weeb doesn't mean I watch everything anime. I assume if it's weeb, I assume I go to you. All right. Well, I've never watched the original One Piece. I've never read the manga. I haven't watched the anime, the hey, live action series. Not a, not a real weeb. Though. I know that, that people really like it because this question. The, like okay. the creator of the original is on it, like consistently. I think that's the biggest like takeaway from the live action adaptation. Yeah. Okay. Well, so there you go. No, no, not my, at this time. No one. Piece I do plan yes. to watch like the anime. No, you're you not. do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's over a thousand you'll, episodes. You'll, you can watch like an episode of it. You're not going to watch the whole thing. You're not going to understand what one you're episode. Gonna... Over yeah, a thousand, just really it's over a thousand episodes. You're gonna I think I watched the first. I actually, think do think oh I watched the gosh. first few episodes of One Piece. It's you get the gist. And I'm the you can do one. anything you set your mind to. Don't listen to them. Okay, Thank we have you. another. We got a long email from Avatar Momo. Thank you very much for writing in. Uh, they say, uh, "Glad the Netflix show existing gives us more FTSW content." Mm-hmm. Um, yay! The uh, they didn't like Ang running away. We talked about that. Um, there's uh, the what? What else do I want to talk about? Oh yeah, the uh, the Katara being the diminished as the main POV character, which I think is interesting too. We talked about Katara not being mother, the motherly aspect, but um, yeah, maybe maybe it is Sokka more than Katara as the perspective character for the show to some extent now, which is a little annoying. Um, I don't know. Anyone? It's anyone? Other comments? Any? I mean, I guess you all, some of you all will know if uh, she gets more prominence perspective later on. 
But maybe that's what you're losing with the sexism is like uh, some, some seeing Katara's experience as much. And it's not really, really being replaced by anything, you know, like uh, that's that's a lot of what uh, we're seeing with with what Katara goes through. But a lot of that comes in the Northern Water Tribe. So I guess we will see. I do think they're kind of trying to set it up more like the three of them are the protagonists versus like the show from Katara's mm-hmm. point of view. But we'll have to see more. But I do think that is something they took away with the intro and then having Grand Grand do it like they kind of just took like the fact that everything's kind of framed from Katara's point of view just out. Yeah, I think that's the way the intro and generally hurts with Katara, but I'm hopeful we'll get more stuff with her. So I guess we will see. Um, but I, I, I agree with a lot of that. Um, the uh, Avatar moment says, P.S. Love the Hidden Zutara segment. <laughs> I found the podcast during the Korra days and it reminded me of the Makora Frogs theory. I Same energy. Oh, about- my God. I forgot about Makora Frogs. <sighs> how lucky you were <laughs> <laughs> oh i ha- I decided that if they do a live action legend of Korra, they should just make it Korra and asami from the beginning and just i thought you were yeah. gonna say yeah, right? i mean i would Korra assume and frogs i would assume that would be the move to... that's the natural move or make I it a love triangle that's with the Mako, move they like would go with honestly i think they i mean might they might love triangle but by season two you're already yeah. like for sure but i i think they're gonna no, bring asami like, in as a romantic interest to Korra, really. and core is like wow like that's just we just, yeah no mock yeah I don't well, see that happening. Well, we still gotta have. Part. We still gotta. Unfortunately, we still. Oh, no, do we? Do we need? We don't Mako. need it, but you know they're gonna keep it. No, do we need Mako at all? <laughs> we could just form it into like a Bolin Mako, like Matt one character. Uh, uh, yeah, a composite yeah. character of the two. It's just Baco, Bolin. that's his new name. Baco. But, but it, but but it's not any Mako. It's just Bolin. I don't yeah. think we need a live action Korra to begin with. I oh, agree. I agree with you. I just, it just this is just what I. Well, think. Sam, did we need a live action Avatar? Yeah, no. it's, it no. might be on the docket whether you want it or not. Well, unfortunately, the world doesn't do what I want most of the time. So <laughs> mood, what a mood. Sam, I asked last podcast everyone, do you care about this show? Well, I certainly didn't care about it until uh, we were proposed with podcasting about it. So, so w- would you have watched it without the podcast? Um, I probably would have thrown it on and watched it with my girlfriend. Just like, oh, look at this! It's, it's here. It's in front of us. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah. But, I remember but you, when you do- when we watched Avatar? Wasn't that better? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. But but the, you, there's not a lot of emotional attachment here, is the sense I'm getting. Uh, not really. I'm definitely uh, looking at it a bit more objectively than I probably would have if I were actually hype about it, which I am not. Yeah. But yeah. I've already yeah, yeah. watched all of it, so whatever. Okay. So we'll, we'll see. Um, and then last comment from Christopher. I used to listen to From the Spirit World uh, back as a kid. I'm an OG Avatar fan. Didn't find you guys until Korra aired. It's so nostalgic to hear you all back together again. Excited to listen. Yay. So oh, thank wow. you all. You know, wor- worst case, the show sucks. At least we're all talking about it. Yeah. That was the idea, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> well, hopefully this has been good. I was like, eh, you're fine. Well, I'm thinking that was also their idea, too. I mean, it's no coincidence that some uh, Avatar Studios stuff dropped, like, news-wise, the same week that this came you're out. Right, you're right. <laughs> and now we're getting an Avatar Fortnite collab. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. Is really? that when it, that's what, what that's what Ali that shared was in I the was chat. Like, oh, and I wow. was like, that is a Fortnite leaker. I was like, what is this? My friend just shared it with me right before we started recording, and I was like, I think I'm gonna be real with you. Know. I don't know what Fortnite is. It's an online <laughs> video game that Gen Fortnite's Z plays. Awesome. I play it. Oh, you you're Gen Z. Yeah, how old are you? I like really? I like I that, that Mel doesn't. I like that Mel doesn't know anything. Like, wait, how old are you? I am 27. You're Gen Z. That's that's yeah, that's old Gen Z. Delaney's baby. You're on the border. Yeah. Well, oh, I, don't it, She's I don't know what they're talking about. Delaney, we need your reaction to Avatar Fortnite. Okay, so okay. As the speaker of the Gen Z, <laughs> I am not the speaker. Delaney's a big Z, a big Fortnite, Fortnite player. Okay, so on the one hand, I'm a little nervous because there was a lot of talk about being a Doctor Who collab, and that's not true. So we'll see. But okay. um, oh, it could be fake. Okay. It could be fake. That's my only thing because they were talking for months about a Doctor Who collab, and that didn't happen. So uh, if there's a if there's gonna be an Avatar Fortnite collab that's super awesome, you're gonna see Aang shooting people with a gun. So yeah, uh, yeah, 
Do they want? Does Nick want that? No. I feel like. I mean, the Teenage Mutant Ninja the Turtles Ninja are Tur- already in it. Yeah. Right now, mm. the Ninja. We're actually. It's not even just a collab like skins. There is a song. There are. There is a full um, event going on. They can have Lady, Lady Gaga is also in Fortnite now, right? But they just added Lady Gaga. She, she's shooting people. I don't think she. she wants Lady that. Gaga can shoot people. I don't want Aang shooting. <laughs> Um, well, Kesha played as Lady Gaga on. Aang would despise guns. Like uh, he's gonna know. shoot a gun. Yeah, I'm a what healer, avatar but... out of all the avatars would shoot Kyoshi? A gun? Definitely, definitely Kyoshi. <laughs> Kyoshi would put that thing <laughs> up right away. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, so I will. I will say this: um, when we do events like this, so we've had Naruto events, we've had um, Jujutsu Kaisen and Attack on Titan. And when they do these and Ninja Turtles, when they do these events, they include weapons from that series. So maybe you could pick up something and you can do airbending or you could do firebending or that that would be really cool. cool. And that might be something I would like to combustion bend in Fortnite. (laughs) That would be cool. That's basically a gun. That's true. (laughs) Um, So that would be something. And they basically a bomb. They might add a a POI, like an area on the map. Uh, They kind of did that with the Ninja Turtles. So I, um, if they, if this actually happens, don't worry. I will spend all my money on it, and I can review everything. So damn, thank you. We'll get you. I do. I did buy review. all the Ninja Turtles because uh, Leonardo's wow. my favorite. I love the Ninja Turtles a lot. Yeah. Okay. More to come. And it'd be cool apparently. if you did it with Aang. It'd be cool because like his glider can be a glider, and then also Appa could be a glider, mm. and Momo so could be a backling. The they said Appa glider, and I'm already like, this is gonna be not the move. It'll be really funny because they're gonna have to have you surf on him, or you're hanging under him because that's what it looks like. Unless or it's just, like, or it's just a glider that has like an Appa skin on it, which I, I don't. I that don't would know. be terrible. I'd be so mad about that's that. That's what I'm picturing. Are you all talking some stuff that I don't. Yeah, who knows uh, what they're talking? Video okay. game. Anyway, I love it. Uh, an avatar could have a gun in the future, by the way, if an avatar still shows. <laughs> That's it's, it's true. Mo- modern, modern, techn- already, modern John, technology. They already had a nuclear bomb in Korra, so yeah, they don't. I don't think they need guns. They can bend. No, I don't think so. Yeah, you could argue guns wouldn't develop in Avatar. That's probably what they'll do. Um, but yeah, if they do the next Avatar, I don't know. Start they're talking about modern technology. About well, they out- you and I they outlawed blood blood bending, so they'll probably outlaw guns. Well, according to the show, you can just burn it. people to death, and that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sh- oh, yeah, no burning people in this episode. That's not um, true. We got flashbacks of Katara's trauma. Yes. You just wait. You just you just give it some time. I assume we'll see a lot more pe- people burn, and you don't put that in the first episode people. and then not, not get more. So that's going to be <laughs> um, fun. Okay. We're going to have dragons yeah. pretty soon. Not that I enjoy violence, but if we're going to see people burning people, I want to see other bending also demolish other humans. That's what I'm mm. saying. When are we going to get earth bending impaling somebody? See? Yes. Or ice? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you would think. When are we going to yeah. see Zaheer's secret technique? Yeah, maybe Northern Water Tribe could see. Okay, well, it'll be interesting. Anyway, on this episode or anything we discuss, final comments, Mel? Uh, I have none. There you go. Yeah. Allie. <laughs> Uh, the music was really good. I like that they used, I forgot the actual name of it, but the traditional Japanese singing that like they also use in Demon Slayer. Again, this is my lead coming out, but like they did that with Kyoshi while she was in the Avatar state and like the Kyoshi warriors. And I felt like I was in Edo, Japan. It was a good vibe. It's kind of that vibe for the whole. Yeah. I mean, the, by the Kyoshi, way, like specifically, they said it was going to be like heavily Japan influenced. It sounded like you said, this is my weed coming out, by the way. That is what I said. <laughs> yeah, that's, I that's also, I was like, with wow. Yeah, yeah. Weeb. Oh, no, weeb. Isn't it? Well, podcast, I know no. that's what you meant. <laughs> Don't smoke anymore. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Sam, any final thoughts? Everyone's coming for me today. Zuko is the best part of the show thus far. And I'm a fan of him. The end. Nice. Delaney, final thoughts? Um, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was a lot of fun. And I'm also really enjoying, like, every time we see the Fire Nation ship, they do the fight, like, dun, dun. Like, it's so good. It makes me so happy. Yeah, that is accurate to the show. Yeah. That they do that cue every time. Uh, so that's good. Yeah, final question. Who would you give Milky to? Um, <laughs> I, this is <laughs> would you give Milky to, Would you give Milky to Boomy that, for the next episode? No. Please retract all of this. Well, where is <laughs> the Milky coming from? <laughs> From yeah, what? From Cows merged with what? Exactly. Yeah. From the fridge. What is wrong with you people? But what in Avatar world? They don't what have produces fridges. Milky. They have, they have like cow pigs or I don't know. Yeah, the hippo cows. Oh yeah, hippo the cows. hippo. Okay. They have milk in Avatar. 
Do they ever drink milk? Too. Aang doesn't drink milk. Well, because he's a vegan. He would- oh, yeah, you can't give Aang milk to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why didn't we mention that to start with? <laughs> All right, give him some... Uh, That's the answer is um, no. banana juice. <laughs> yeah. That- oh, I said that to my wife. I was like, I wonder who they're going to like cast as Guru Patik if we ever get that far. And she's like, who is that? And I was like, oh, yeah, onion banana juice. And she's like, that sounds nasty. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't seem like they would do that. That's the type of silly thing that we're taking away, unfortunately. Um. Okay. Man, Don't no milky, milky, no no one, no one <laughs> banana juice, no, it's, no, no milky liquids, for any. Well, sure. milky yeah. for other people. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Not funny. Anyway. I enjoyed this because usually I'm the one being bullied. I'm sorry, Ali. Um, are you though? I don't. <laughs> Pass the torch. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we, we, it was great. That was the best part of the podcast. So that's, I appreciate. That's it. really. <laughs> That's not a good thing. No, that's the, that is a good thing. No, it's not. It's a child. Okay, if, you en- if you enjoyed the Milky, you can consider <laughs> supporting us via Patreon at patreon.com. Do not. Slash overly animated. Thanks to our current patrons, especially our patrons of the podcast. Anon, and thanks as always to our patron executive producer, Steve Michael and Phonician. Um, again, podcast at overly animated. Email us. At, tell us who you would give Milky to Please out of all the characters. Stop. And <laughs> not the move. We're going to get like 25 emails. Leave, leave a comment wherever uh and uh thank you guys for listening we'll be back with episode three i assume it's just called omashi what is it called city <laughs> what, what, what's, what, what's that stupid name when... it is called it's called omashi, omashi yeah okay can we read <laughs> these titles are bad. <laughs> okay we'll be back to talk omashi soon see you guys then thanks for listening bye, bye. Know, bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>